All right. Another day, another stream. It's what we do around here. God damn it, I got no plans to slow down. Okay. Let me change my headphones real quick so I can check the audio. Oh, da, da, da. If only there was a way to check the audio before the stream. I guess I could technically record a short video or something, but sounds like a lot of effort. So I don't think I will. Maybe I should actually. That's actually a good idea. Write that down, future me. Write that down. Um. Okay. There's not really any good audio indicators on this menu. I can hear the background music. I can hear the little clicky clicky as I mouse over stuff. And I can hear my voice. So I'm gonna assume it's okay, but I may have to keep an eye on the, the good old audio magical green, yellow, red bars of things are happening. May have to do that. Because I have no idea how loud or soft this game is. Zero idea. In fact, I know nothing about this game, which is a fine segue into the start of the stream. Hello, everyone, and welcome to... Yeah, that's right. Who could have guessed it? Another stream. This is Laggy Couch, or Justy Major Aggie Couch. A man that is seriously, seriously going to harmonize all that into Laggy Couch soon. I'm assuming you can change your Twitch, or, or yeah, your Twitch username. I'm pretty sure you can. And I can probably do something with my YouTube name as well. So I need to do that. And this weekend may be the time. So <laughs> this may be the last time you have to listen to my stupid freaking intro where I give three names and confuse everyone. But anyways, that's enough about me. Let's talk about this game, um, which will be a little challenging because I know absolutely nothing about this game. I know nothing at all. Uh, Citizen Sleeper is... So, okay, let me back up just a little bit. I last stream completed Elden Ring, right? Finally finished it off and was very, you know, bittersweet sort of ending. I'm sad to see the game go. I'm sad because I'm probably not going to get a chance to explore that world again in the near future. Um, but, you know, obviously it's nice to get it done and it's a chance to move on to other things on this channel. And this is the first of those other things. As I was preparing to stream tonight, I felt like playing something new. You know, I kicked around yesterday, maybe Vampire Survivors, and there's always tabs. Um, and I've got a list of games as well that I've kind of got on the back burner, ready to go. But I didn't feel like playing any of that. I felt like doing something completely new and something I had no idea about. So I jumped onto Steam. I kind of clicked around at some recommended um, games that they, they kind of serve up to you and this game came up and it was the first one that kind of caught my eye and it had good reviews and it seems like a complete change of pace so I say we give it a shot I know nothing about it except the few reviews I read that said it's pretty good and that it's like sci-fi-ish story driven maybe don't know besides that going in completely blind which is something I've never really done on stream before I've streamed a lot of games that I've either, you know, played before or that I kind of know what I'm getting into, like Elden Ring, for example. So this is a new experience for me. I, yeah, I, I just don't know how this will go. This could be horrible, this could crash and burn, or this could be amazing. It, it probably won't be amazing, given that it's it's me and my channel, but um, you know what I'm saying. So we'll give it a shot. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and jump in there. That's enough blabbering on. So new game. Uh, we'll do the middle slot. All right, I get to choose a character class. I think this game has some RPG elements to it. So there'll be some setup here at the beginning. So we have an operator. So an operator works with drones and high-precision remote machines to perform complex tasks from a distance. Sleepers assigned to operator work are usually cerebral and precise people. Hmm. Don't know if cerebral or precise applies to me in any way shape or form so let's see it's got a transfer intercept perk which i have no idea what that means engineer hmm. so he's got a plus one with interfaces for digital interfaces and a minus one for endurance okay that's an option we've got an extractor um is that all we've got okay so we've got three choices we'll work left to right i guess Minus in the middle, so center, left, right, whatever. Um, machinist is another option. 
A machinist repairs and modifies automated systems used in industrial resource extraction. Sleepers assigned to machinist work are usually diligent, careful, and structured people. All right, that's 0 for 2 as far as things that apply to me personally with these characters, but uh, maybe the third one will, will ring our personal bell or that no one's ever said that before. A personal bell isn't a thing. What am I trying to say? Maybe it'll fit the bill. Yeah, we'll go with that. He has an efficient extractor perk, which again, I don't know what that means at all. No idea about the gameplay for this game either. I think I read something about dice rolls. Um, plus one engineering, minus one engaging or approaching a problem head on. Well, that's kind of Okay, so maybe a machinist is the way to go. Although I'm not diligent, careful, or structured. Um, engineering is um, my day job. And I don't like approaching problems head on. So at least the skills kind of fit me to some degree. If not the flavor text description. And our third choice is the extractor. Or the extractor, if you want to say like a normal person. <clears throat> Sorry, if anyone says extractor, I'm not. It wasn't a shot at you. Um, you, you, I'm sure you're very normal, unless you don't want to be normal, in which case I'm sure you're very unique. Anyways, um, <clears throat> extractors work on resource extraction, no shit. Often in hard vacuum environments, oh. I'm, I'm used to soft vacuums normally, you know, with like the bags that you can push in, but hard vacuums sound a little bit yabai. <laughs> they sound a little bit, um, I don't know, tough. You know, like they... It's like, oh, shit's getting really bad down there. We got to send the hard vacuums. A anyways, that was a dumb joke. Um, sleepers assigned to extractor work are often confident, self-sufficient, and have a high level of endurance. Okay, so none of these flavor texts apply to me. None of them at all. Um, but he's got photosynthetic skin, so that's cool. Um, minus one intuition, plus one endurance. So I think we're going to go with the second choice, the machinist seems like the best group of skills for me personally so let's go ahead and start volume's a little loud on the game I mean drop it a little do you need to keep an eye on that alright <clears throat> unknown first thing you become aware of on waking is the disconnect the delay between thinking and feeling between wanting to act and acting Minor, almost perceptible, but always present. Yeah, that lag. I'm telling you, that lag will get you every time. Uh, all right, let's continue. It's at its worst when waking, when yourself has spent many dark hours recalling what it felt like to be real, to be a person, to be in a body that was indisputably yours. Think of that body. Hmm. Do I want to remember who I was? No, I think we need to embrace the present. There's no use in dwelling on the past. You resist nostalgia. Well, <laughs> probably not effectively, but whatever. It's pointless, especially now. Well, that's kind of what I was saying. This is the moment to reach out, not curl inwards. Yes, exactly. This is your moment of escape, even if it feels immediately like you traded one prison for another. Smaller, colder, and lifeless. Shit trade. Always read the uh, fine print in your trade offers. Reach out. You almost laugh. Almost. I was going to laugh there. I almost did, but I decided not to. Or you would if there was room, or even air to do so. The walls of the container are immediately present. Cold, hard, at your back and face, cramping your limbs. We're in a coffin. Let's go. Space coffin. You resist the desire to stretch, knowing that the claustrophobia comes next. And retreat a little from your central nervous system. is isn't painful. Not like you used to know pain, at least. I see. It's just uncomfortable, not painful. In emergency mode, pain is a message delivered with efficiency and ease, a reminder that harm is imminent. There is no insistent throb, no trembling nerves, just a warning delivered with the banal quality of a digital notification. Right now, there are thousands of them. Hmm. The plan or the others? Hmm, the plan or the others? I don't know who the others are. I think we need to remember the plan. You mostly remember that... Excuse me. I'm, again, rambling immediately. Hmm at the start of sentences. You mostly remember that it wasn't a good plan, but then your options were limited. Er, you mostly remember that it was, wasn't was a good plan, but then your options were limited. And once you got the itch to get out, by any means possible, it was either that plan or something much worse. Exactly, a bad plan is better than no plan, sometimes. It was at least simple. Collapse the shaft, drift away in the chaos, slipped into cargo processing, seal yourselves into containers, 
Then just hope the freight left before you were missed. Hmm, I see. So we caused some sort of disaster, and then packaged ourselves away and hoped that they would leave us behind. Some were lost in the shaft. Some were lost to the shaft. Others never found the meeting point. Only a few made it to the containers. But the freighter, as far as you know, left. That feels like enough, so we did escape. Enough to know that you might no longer be on that grim and heartless rock. Even if in the airless hold of a freighter, you might freeze solid long before you reach any destination. Hmm... Let's um, try to rest, I guess, even though we just woke up. We tried, but you are restless. It has been a long time since you left. Surely weeks, maybe months. You are dully aware of damage to your legs, your right arm. You have been reserving energy as much as possible, but even then your body has shut many of its systems down to protect you. You have spent much of that time asleep, knowing that anything else would be impossible to endure. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that we're some sort of cyborg or... um. Mechanation, that that would explain the lag that we kind of that this intro paragraph led with, right? Okay. You feel the weight of that impossibility begin to gather. It is time to sleep again, to nudge this false body into inducing delta waves in your emulated mind, emulated mind, and once again, recoil into a dream of when you were once a person. Oh, so we do get to remember who we were. Time passes. The cold creeps further in. That's bad. Wish the cold would not creep. I feel something. This is the cold. Warmth. Oh, it's the opposite. Not true warmth, but the indication of its presence. Your joints release from their rigor. Sound, too, everywhere, screeching and shimmering so loud that your body ducks your hearing to protect its sensors. Huh. Okay. Then light. Ooh, I saw a little flash there. I also notice my mouse is viewable on screen. Hopefully that's okay. Huh. Then light, white as the cold, then softer and softer until a haze of dirty yellow. Until in a haze of dirty yellow, a figure appears. You are out. Out of what? Hmm. Dragos, pragmatic salvager. Okay, we got zero currency. And no data. Good. And the only thing I can see on... To, to click on is this. So we'll click on Dragos. Hello. He's a pragmatic and private salvager. It's been a few hours since Dragos pulled you from the container. He sit huddled in a corner of his scrapyard, swaddled in the reflective folds of a mylar blanket. Mylar blanket, eh? Is that one of those, like, mountain blankets? Hang on. Let me do a little bit of research here. To understand the story it's trying to tell. Let me not play music on my phone that I almost did. That would have been bad. Uh, Mylar, eh? Mylar. Images. Yeah, it's that, like, foil-looking emergency blanket stuff, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it seems that's it. So, we're in one of those. Uh, you are slowly coming back into consciousness, back to life, and you stare at the ornately curving element of an improvised heater. Ooh, ornately curving. You are surrounded by angular, incoherent lumps of ships, some corroded beyond recognition, others still carrying glassy wounds along their edges where a plasma arc sliced them apart. As you trace their shapes with fogged eyes, you hear a voice. Do I need to voice act here? I don't do voice acting. I just talk, but I can try. Hmm. So, sleeper, you thawed yet? Um... Do we respond to this guy? I think we probably should, or I think he might start salvaging us and taking us apart. Never seen one of you come in like this. New frames must have, must have better perseverance in Sub-Zero Vac. I'm not going to do this anymore. <clears throat> seen more than a few of you frozen solid to whole plates or inside outer locks in my time. They weren't so lucky. All right, so we're one of the lucky ones. Dragos, how do we know his name? Comes into focus, shrouded in makeshift tech. Yep, you can see it right there. Even that thing, that finger camera that I just noticed. Oh my god, keep it away. Get the fuck away from me. Um, his headset with its glinting eyes, the mark of a drone operator. Ah, oh, I see. On his shoulder, 
One of his symbiotically linked drones perches. Yeah, I see that. I'm, I'm worried about that, honestly. It's irising eye locking, locking you with an unflinching stare. It's locking me. Is it, like, actually locking me? Like, is it hacking and stuff? Last, last living sleeper... Last living sleeper that came through this yard was a while ago. They didn't last long. Well, I probably won't either. You struggle to read his expression beneath the tech, but he seems lost in memory for a moment. Or perhaps he is just figuring out what to do with you. Yeah, probably that. I mean, I don't even know what to do with myself, so... His uh, questioning that is understandable. Let's gather some data. What happened to those guys that didn't make it? He ignores my question. Oh, great. I won't ask what led you to do it. To sell yourself to a corporation. And I suppose you know you can't go back. Your old body, that's theirs now. And you're just software. A rogue emulation illegally possessing corporate property. Okay, huh. So, yeah, that's a question. Was I always an automaton? Or... Did I actually sell my human body and then they uploaded my consciousness into some sort of, you know, robo? Because this guy looks human to me. You know, he doesn't look robotic despite him being draped with wires and stuff. He could be. He could have human skin or human-esque skin. Don't know. I nod along. I'm doing it right now. You can't see, but I am. You remember biometrically signing the forms, the cold floor on your feet as you padded to the sleeper cells. The promise of a life off-world. But as you do, you get the now familiar sensation that these aren't your memories. These are things you know, but not things you feel. You are no longer that person. You're an offshoot, a copy. Right, exactly. It's getting very... Oh, what was that game? Uh, the one where you're in the ocean and there's robots everywhere. Can't think of it. Kind of the psychological horror game. Really good game. Like, kind of like Amnesia. Maybe in the same company. What was that game? Uh, ocean robot game. Psychological game. What was that? Soma. That's right. Soma, Soma, Soma. Of course, Soma. Yeah, that's a uh, mind bender of a game. And we're getting some vibes of that here. What you won't know is what's ahead. At least the last one didn't. There's no easy way to put that. Put it. That body of yours has fallen apart. It's the same for any sleeper who makes it out. Essenop wants to protect their property. But if they can't keep hold of you, well, then no one can. I see. So maybe some sort of like auto self-destruct type thing is going on. You remember that too, or at least rumors of it from the other sleepers. Oh, you remember that too. Planned obsolescence. Ah, a built-in dependence on the regularly administered supplements that were part of your routine. Stop taking them and your body begins to shut down, separate from your emulated mind. How long has it been? How long do you have? Okay, so we have goal now. Either jump bodies or find a way to sustain this one. I'm done with the voice acting for real this time. <laughs> but for now, sleeper, you're one of the lucky ones. Dragos glances up and away towards the glassy dome of the yard. The eye is the best place you could be right now. The eye? Yeah, I'm not being quiet here. There's no need, need to be. You can be quiet on subsequent playthroughs when you know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. The station. You'll see soon enough. Okay, so the station is the eye, all caps, or at least capitalized. Dragos impatiently shifts his weight. Look, I've got things to be getting on with, he trails off. There's an old freight container I've been using as storage out in the stacks. We haven't been pulling in much valuable scrap these days, so you're welcome to it. Okay, so I got a freight container in the stacks. Something wells up inside you. Emotion, fatigue, you shakily get to your feet. Hopefully not vomit. All right, you head on up there. You look like you need some rest. I just woke up. And with that, Drago stalks back to the wrecks. His drone's already converging on a rusting hulk. Plasma flashes silhouetting his spindly figure as he returns to work. Damn. Very descriptive. Tutorial introduction. Welcome to Erlen's Eye. Life on the Eye runs in cycles, during which you can talk to characters, explore areas of the station, and perform actions. At the end of each cycle, you need to head to your current home to rest. 
Resting will move time forward on the station. Head to the empty container location to rest and end the cycle now. Okay. And we move around by... Okay, so we mouse wheel. Okay, got it. Or can we... Okay, we can W... We can WS. So I'm looking for... Yes, this is my empty container. Thanks, Dragos. Appreciate it. All cycles need to end. Rest and prepare for the next one. Yes, let's do it. You wait curled up in the corner of a container, of the container, and begin slowly assembling the world around you. What? After all this time, you still find this body, the one you wake in now, strange and disjointed, its messages readable but somehow wrong. You sit up pulling the mylar blanket close against the cold. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Like, um, body dysphoria. I can't say I've ever, I, I don't know if that's the right word, but like a feeling of not being in charge of your body or not being connected to it. I've never really felt it too much, personally. I can imagine if you've got some horrible disease, you know, you can feel like you're trapped inside your body. I guess the closest I've ever felt to it, by the way, drink responsibly, take care of yourselves, all that stuff, is I've been sort of drunk before and then, like, felt like my arm isn't my arm. So that's the closest I've come to that. But, yeah, that, I don't think that's what he's talking about here. Right, continue. Here you are, on this ruined station, millions of miles from anyone you know. Are you still in the system? Did any of the others make it out? It's impossible to know. After all this, what matters? Okay, so... I don't see why we should escape here. I mean, he did say it's a ruined station, but... I don't know if we ha we've had any indication of, like, what's going on. I haven't heard that this place is going to wreck or explode or it's on a collision course or anything like that. I feel like getting answers is what we should do. Because we just don't have enough information about this world we're in or what we can do. And then building a life, that seems premature, you know. Again, I don't see any reason to escape, but I don't see any reason we should stick around either. We very well could be hurtling towards the sun, for all I know. So, let's get some answers. It all matters. The past is impossible to escape if it remains a blur. What SNR did to you cannot be forgotten. You need a way of understanding all this before you can move on. Exactly. Exactly. Where are you? What is this place? What happened to the others? The questions outnumber the answers. Obviously. Obviously, they usually do. Um, you want to change that, but you have to learn to survive first. Right. Tragos has left a few, few comforts in the container. The Mylar blanket warm. We love it. The bedroll you slept on, right? A canister of water, a makeshift electric stove, and some faded sachets of some desiccated powder. Hmm. You thumb the powder stud, the power stud of the stove and begin to boil the water. The contents of the sachets smell like damp wood, and you sprinkle them into the liquid. Maybe wood broth? Ooh, as the pungent smell washes over you. It was battery acid. Um, you know, like how batteries get corroded and you know, you get, like, powder all over the springs and stuff that, that's in the compartment. You know what I'm talking about. I bet it's that. Huh. Images of your restless sleep come back to you. A ring, like the station, but skeletal and ghostly. A web of threads pulling at your skin. Yeesh. A constellation of bright pol polygonal, 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 whatever, shapes. Like angular suns burning into your mind. Okay. There's something unpleasantly visceral about these images. Yeah, I fucking bet. And it is long after you finish drinking that they begin to fade. You tidy away the stove as best you can and try to gather enough energy to greet the day. So what did we actually drink? Was it some sort of... Was it food? Like, was it nutrition? Or was it, like, a, a, a beverage of recreation, for lack of a better term? Don't know. All right. Tutorial. Condition, action dice, and energy. Condition. Your condition represents the current state of your artificial body. It depletes by one segment each cycle, okay? But it can also be damaged by violence, injury, or lack of food. If your condition bar empties, you will suffer a breakdown. Oh, no. So that's one. So it's up here. Okay, so I see one, two, three. So the yellow thing here is our condition. Um, 
You'll have to figure out how to recover your condition now that you no longer have access to corporate pharmaceuticals that were keeping you alive. I see. Action dice. Aha, this is where the RPG element comes in, right? So, at the start of each cycle, you roll your action dice. Okay. These dice can be used to perform actions on the station. The number of dice rolled is based on your current condition. Oh, okay. The worse your condition is, the less dice you have. Right. Once you have used your dice, you cannot take any further actions and must rest to recover them, ending the current cycle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we have dice. It's based on our condition. We roll the dice. And I'm assuming certain actions require a certain number of dice, like dots or whatever, um, to perform. And then once all that's done, we have to rest. Got it. Energy. You also need to eat to survive. Damn it, I hate that. It's so annoying. Why can't we just survive without eating? This is this is represented by your energy bar. This third bar down here. Right. You can refill your energy bar by eating, but first you'll have to find somewhere to get food and currency to buy it. Your energy depletes by two segments each cycle. Mm, okay. If it becomes empty, you, you will be starving, and your condition will deplete at a double rate per cycle. Eesh. Okay. So we lose one segment of this every cycle, and I'm guessing this is a whole segment of energy? So really, we need to keep our condition up and our energy up, and energy feeds into condition. So we need drugs and we need food. Okay. Hmm. Oh, I see. So it's like a drag and drop. Hmm. Okay. So I'm guessing I can drag those towards actions or something in the station. So let's go ahead and leave. Oh, it's Dragos again. Dragos has stood in the corridor when you close close up the container. Hi, Dragos. A private, a pragmatic and private scavenger or salvager. He's still wearing his headset, and in the harsh light of the corridor, you realize it's implanted. Oh, I see. A drone sits on his shoulder, yet the same one. Its cache of sensor eyes rapidly irising. How are you feeling? I'm pretty hungry, I think, it seems like. Yeah, I'm, well, no, I'm, I'm okay. The drone chirps. Good to hear. Oh, is the drone talking to me? You notice that beneath the operator's rig, his skin is marked by burns and blotches. Yeah, he should. I know the container isn't much, but it'll keep you safe. He pauses. So, I'm not going to chit-chat too long. You well enough to work? Yeah, what kind of work? Look, I'll be honest with you, sleeper. I didn't pull you out of that container out of the goodness of my heart. He looks away. Mm. With his non-eyes, with his scanner eyes. At the yard, it's simple stuff. We hack these old holes down, sell them off to the shipyards or to the uh, right market dealers for cryo. Cryo, I see Occasionally, we pull out some tech, something with a bit more value, but most of what comes in is scrap. I see. So we're, yep, we're salvagers. This all checks out for, you know, versus his item, his uh, character description, not item description. People are not items. People are people. <sighs> Let me get a bit of soda, too. May as well. It's the weekend, after all. Cheers, by the way. Congratulations on making it to the weekend, if you did. Delicious Dr. Pepper. Not sponsored still. Never will be sponsored. I need a just disclaimer. Always. Like on the bottom of the screen that says Laggy Couch is never sponsored by anything that he mentions ever. So you can just cover that. Anyways. Right. We hack old holes. We sell them off to shipyards. And maybe we might get some tech if we're lucky. But it's mostly scrap. It's hard to find good hands here, but I figure as a sleeper, you'll be used to the manual labor. And obviously, I'll slip you a few chits of commission based on what you turn up. What are chits? These! He pulls out a bunch of chits. Or small metal bars. Airwalled crypto, isolated from the market. It's what we used to trade out here. Airwalled crypto? Huh. So, like, not part of the economy? Weird. He shuffles his feet nervously. Look, I wouldn't usually do this. In my opinion, you'd be best suited moving on as quick as you can. And sleepers, well, he trails off. But things being the way they are for me at the yard, I need the help. What's going on? 
Things are a little tight, that's all. I owe a little cryo to a client here or there. Okay. All right, so... He's desperate, which is probably why he saved me. He pauses, thinking of something else to add. Look, just come down to the yard when you're feeling fresher. There's plenty to do. All right, I guess I will. He nods distractedly and turns and walks away, the drone hopping along ahead of him. See you later, he calls back. So do we trust this guy? Not really. But he did save us, and he did help us out, although he did that with the with the intent of, you know, getting some, some assistance and some labor. So I don't know that we can trust him, but I don't really have any reason to 100% doubt him yet. So we'll help, we'll help drag us out for a while, I think. Looks like it's time to get to work, indeed. And the only question is, will this work allow me to survive, to, to build up, you know, to take the drugs I need to keep my condition high and to earn any enough money to, to eat? I'm assuming we can if Dragos is still around. Although he probably just needs food and not the drugs. So I don't know. But anyways, anywhere else to go? Oh, we could go here. The low end gate. Passage into the low end. Hmm. But we said we'd help Dragos out. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll go to his yard. The decaying scrapyard. Tutorials. Actions. One of two. Actions are the primary way you interact with the world of Citizen Sleeper. To perform an action, click and drag your chosen action dice to the slot. Right, right, yeah. Alright, so... Repeatable action, or... These are both repeatable. So, okay, so those are a couple of examples of actions, I guess. So we're not going to look too close to them for now. Actions reward you with clock progress, energy, condition, or items, depending on their outcome. But it doesn't say... I see it says, like, risky and then safe there. Hmm. Okay. And I see that they have associated skills. So this is an engineer skill, this whole dissection thing. So there's a plus one there, whereas manual salvage is an endurance thing and a zero. Huh. Right. So, there's three types of outcomes. Positive, the action goes better than expected. Neutral, the action succeeds. Or negative, the action fails. Okay. I see no, like, dice requirement here either. So, action dice affect these outcomes as follows. Okay, so a six is 100% chance positive. Okay. A five is 50-50, positive neutral. So, always a successful outcome. Threes and twos are... 75% you know successful with a 25% positive and 25% of failure and then one or two is hmm yeah it's not good just a half chance to even get it right at all and a half chance of failing completely of course it doesn't really say what negative means like do we risk taking more damage to our condition or something I don't know I don't know all right, tutorial actions two of two. Actions display information about their type, risk level, and the skill and modifiers that apply to that action. Right, right. I was looking at that. So one, two, three, four. So we have a type, um, either critical or repeatable. Okay. Critical actions can only be performed once. Hmm, I see. Like for the entire story or per day? Don't know, I guess it will become apparent as we, as we work our way through. There's the risk. So, either safe, risky, or danger. Safe is no loss of condition. Okay. So, no chance of losing anything. Risky, a negative outcome means cryo or energy loss. Mm, okay. And a danger is condition loss. Oh, and even neutral can mean cryo or energy loss. So, really, you shouldn't... Mm, okay. I kind of want to go back. I need to take note of the chances with the dice. I really do. In fact, okay, let me just... Let me start taking some pictures so I can refer back to them later. Or, you know what? The game's going to let me, isn't it? So that's probably unnecessary. Probably. Um, Skill. So skill is here, right? So it's the skill that this action requires. Either engineer, interface, endure, into it, or engage. Which were the skills that were available when we chose our character. And then the modifier, right, which is associated with the skill. So it's a negative one, zero, plus one, or plus two. This is added to the action dice when it's slotted. Okay. 
It improves its value. Ah, I see. So it's a straight bump to the dice. Some actions require a plus one to perform. Hmm. Okay. I see. So we could put our five towards whole dice section and get a guaranteed um, win here, right? I think that's maybe what we should do. Um, a debt called in. Cycle clock. Hmm. Dragos is tied up in something ugly, and if he misses a payment or two, things could get nasty. Right, yeah, I was getting that impression. And then back in business, every salvager knows they are always just one lucky haul away from the next payday. Right. So let's drop five here. And then... I guess drop six here? Okay, so we can only do one of these. Right, right, right. Okay, got it. So we'll do... Oh, and it tells you there, 100% positive. So let's compare that to this. But it doesn't tell you what the risky outcome is there. So hmm. what if I go to data? No. Okay. Well, let's just burn our five, I guess. And start action. Working. Rolling dice. Rolling dice. Okay. Tutorial. Clocks. Actions often progress clocks. Clocks are displayed below the actions that fill them, and they track your actions and how they affect the world. Filling a clock means something good or bad is about to happen. I see. Hmm. Some clocks, such as the one tracking Draco's, Drago's debt, are cycle clocks. These clocks tick themselves once each cycle and can complete without player input. Mm -hmm. Any active cycle clocks will be displayed on the icon for that location. Hmm. I see. All right. So we've done some good stuff here I guess okay we should be able to leave and see what else is going on right so oh wait another tutorial in citizen sleeper you will unlock drives as you discover more about yourself in the world drives guide you in pursuing specific objectives depending on which path you wish to take you can track drives and any track drive will place a yellow marker on locations that will help you to pursue your goals okay Access your drive menu via the arrow button at the top left of the screen. Okay, got it. You are now free to explore Erlen's Eye and make a life for yourself here. Try tracking a drive to help you survive. Yeah, it seems like a good idea. Look for food to keep your energy up and a way to recover condition. Yes, also seems like a good idea. Feel clocks to progress stories and find new opportunities. Remember to end cycle at your home when you are out of dice. Right. Use the mouse wheel or WS to scroll along the station. Rotate the view with A and D. Oh, okay. I didn't try rotating it before. Let's see. Oh, okay. Okay. So there's Drago's Yard. We got some docks. We got the rotunda. You'll need to access corporate pharmaceuticals. Otherwise, this escape attempt will come through a rapid end. Find a doctor. Okay, let's track finding a doctor. And... Okay, so apparently if we go there, that will help us find a doctor, apparently. So let's do that. Ooh, a political action, or a critical action, sorry. It was, the sea was washed out there. Um, so we could ask for directions, which I have a minus one on. Why wonder when there are hundreds of people that live and work within... Oh, I see little ships riding around in there. Cool. Uh, hundreds of people that live and work within the bright market. All you need is the courage to approach them. Well, unfortunately, unfortunately, don't know that I got that. Or we could explore the market, which is risky, but not dangerous. I don't know why asking for directions is dangerous. That's a very, um, I think it says a lot about the creator. He feels that way, but okay. Um, I'm thinking we burn our six here, get our 100% positive action on exploring the market, and get on our way to finding this doctor, right? So, let's start our action. No need to compute. It's it's 100% uh, I mean, success. So, okay, so we've bumped our local knowledge up to I guess I could go home without burning this dice, right? Alright, let's go ahead and do this. Because this is a priority for us. 
Okay, plus one local knowledge. We filled up our clock, so... Manage to follow the flow of people, and you start to appreciate, even enjoy, the chaotic layout of the market. Amazing. Okay, cool. So, I don't know what filling up the clock has done for me, though. You know? Ah! Slum Doctor, Sabine. Ord Exchange, Hardware Exchange. We have 15 credits, I see. 15 cryo. Cryptocurrency, stored in air-walled sticks of memory known as chits. Right. Let's check out what's going on with the Doctor, and then maybe if we've got some time left, we may burn our one for a safe salvaging action in Drago's yard. Maybe. Hmm. But yeah, we got to get this Doctor situation sorted, I think. So we are focusing on that. Next comes a call from the Enforcer at the door. You shuffle down the flickering hallway towards the open apartment door. You keep your head down and your shoulders high in the queue, trying not to bring attention to yourself. Hmm. It's like... Kind of like shrugging up, I guess. You were thankful for the tip-off that a doctor was operating out of this place, but now you're here, or now that, but now that you are here, you aren't so sure. The gang enforcer on the door, the flickering light strips, the decaying hab block, they all, they have all made the long queue a test of your nerve. But your options are few, or like minimal at all, like zero. Besides this, so one. And without a supply of stabilizer, this body, your body will explode. You suppress a shiver and shuffle forward to the front of the queue to try to find something to distract yourself. Let's not look at the Enforcer. You lean against the doorframe and look into the apartment. The entryway is dark, punctuated by the green indicators of Slack's steel sealed containers. Man, this is uh, testing my narration tonight, isn't it? <clears throat> let's, uh, let's wet the voice just a little bit more. Uh -huh. Actually, while I'm thinking about it, I have all these streams open and running, which can't be good for my stream. So, yeah, solve that. Hum. So, yeah, stacks of sealed containers. You lean in and see amber light filtering through a far doorway, screened with plastic sheeting, beyond which blurred shapes move. The slap of the enforcer's palm against the doorway jerks you away. Wait your turn, he growls. Okay, we'll wait. I guess this is growling right there. It's more like, where are your turn? But whatever. <laughs> where is she? Sorry. Um, had something in my throat. I think it was Christian Bale's Batman. And not like that, by the way. Not in my throat as... Uh, moving on. After a few moments, a figure pushes through the doorway, and you catch a distant voice. Send the next one in, Toshiro. The enforcer jerks his head, and you slip inside, passing through the dark entryway and pushing through the plastic sheeting on the far door. Anytime you know, I've seen authors use... You know, someone jerks their head before when they're, like, signaling for you to go. It sounds so violent, though. It sounds a little too violent. I don't know. It sounds like they're always envision someone popping their, their neck out of socket when they do that. Right. The room beyond is bathed in a warm light. The floor-to-ceiling transparent panel gives a full view of the bright market sealed roof and the buzzing traffic above. And for a moment, you are transfixed by the motion. But only a moment. Oh, hey, Sabine. How's it going? Nice cloak. Come sit. Or come sit. Comes a sharp voice. Or sorry, come sit. I guess that's a sharper voice. <laughs> uh, and you see a silhouetted figure turned away, replacing the plastic sheeting over the frame of a simple folding bed. You make your way across the room. The figure turns, and as they do, you see an expression of confusion flash across their features. They open their mouth as if to speak. They blink, and then quickly regain their composure. Okay, so we've caught them off guard, it seems. Please sit. They gesture to the bed, then turn to an open case of tools on the table. Tools? I think I need pills, not tools. I hope there's not, like, a an action check here, because I only have a single snake eye. Not even snake eyes. Snake eye. Not enough. Um, so, after her saying, please sit, twice now, right? She said, come sit and then please sit. We sit. You sit. Sabine turns, a compact diagnostic span scanner of some kind, in their hand. They hold it to their eye. Remain still, please. Their tone is clipped and businesslike, I see. You stare ahead, still dazed from their expression when you entered. Fear, recognition, sadness, unmistakably etched across their face. Hmm. Okay. How long have you been on the station? They ask, the scanner still to their eye. Um... 
I mean, I don't think we should lie to the doctors. We'll say a few cycles. They nod. It's good you came to me. They set the diagnostic scanner on the table. I'm going to start by assuming you don't know anything. Good assumption, lady. Or whoever you are. I'm assuming it's a girl. I don't know for sure, I guess. It did refer to them as they earlier, so... Yeah, good assumption. I mean, that's a good, perfect demonstration there, isn't it? I clearly don't know what's going on. Um, they take your arm and roll up your sleeve, inspecting your synthetic skin. Your body is dying. Well, we kind of knew that. They say it without ceremony, without drama, but not without empathy. Okay. At least they're empathetic. SNR doesn't like to see its property technology, proprietary technology let loose. To prevent bodies like yours, frames as they call them, from being stolen, repurposed, or in your case, escaping, they built in a process of so-called planned obsolescence. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. It's kind of like real life, man. It's kind of like God built in planned obsolescence into all of us. Um, so that's fun. Frames decay rapidly when not regularly injected with stabilizer, one, one which Espen, Essen Arp remains the sole producer of. They look up. Sound familiar? Yeah, it does. Good, that may help. They swap to your other arm, running some thin metal device over your skin. You feel your forearm tremble. It's shaken. I'm sorry, Sabine says, and you are unsure if they mean for the cold touch of the metal or everything else. Hmm. Emulations like you, sleepers as most people know you, aren't classified as people in any, any of the surrogate systems. You have no rights, no status. Well, fuck. They focus hard on the inspection of your arm. And S and Arp has no reason to release stabilizer into the market. Right. Although it seems like there is some demand. Probably. Although it's all black market, right? Sabine looks up as if to apologize again, but they stop themselves. I know little of this is of use to you. They turn away, disassembling the metal instrument and cleaning it. Mm. Silence fills the room as Sabine works, and then the silence gives way to tension. You stare at their back, willing them to say something. Anything. Yeah, you know, the uh, the themes of this game so far are, like, very, like, nihilistic and, like, not being in touch with your body and, you know, not having any way to fix it. I don't know. It's pretty grim. It's pretty grim. Dark thoughts to think about on a Friday night. Sabine turns to face you. I may be able to help. Oh, that's good. They sigh. And you see the darkness under their eyes. Hear the fatigue in their voice. They gesture to the door. Okay. You saw Toshiro outside? I did. I nod. He works for my benefactor, Yadagon. They are influential in the low end. They give me this space to work, run the door, and take the profits. Oh. At the same time, I have to fix up their enforcers, tend to their implants, sew up their wounds. They look away. Hmm. But Yadagon has connections. Smugglers from the Starward Belt. Mercenaries working for the corporations on Ember. If they can source the stabilizer, maybe you'll have a better chance. Unfortunately, we'll have to get involved with Yadagon, I imagine, and give him something. So, what can I do for him? Savine sets down their slate, their notes complete. This, this is dangerous, and it'll be expensive, but I think we can do it. Why are you helping me? Like, seriously. Savine walks away to the window, their face dappled by the shadows of passing drones. Let's just see if this works first. I'll let you know when I have a lead. Okay. There's Dappled again. That turned up in Elden Ring a couple days ago. What the fuck does that mean? I think it must be spotted, right? Dappled. Definition, please. Yeah, marked with spots or rounded patches. Okay, gotcha. Okay. I nod and leave. Sabine's still staring out, unmoving. When you reach the lower level of the market, you look back up through the panels of the roof to see if you can see their face. But the room looks dark against the lights of the market. You duck your head and walk off into the crowd. Hmm. Okay. Sabine's surgery. And that is... Tied to our survival quest, which seems fucking important. So you can buy some food here. Maybe. There's the low-end gate. There's a hardware exchange. See docks. We got Rotunda, another dock. We got Drago's Yard, which is again tied to something. So if I just go here, 
Sourcing stabilizer. We gotta wait. Okay, so there's no action we can take there for now. Okay, let's go ahead and burn our last, our one dice on this safe task over here, the salvaging task, and just see what happens. Since there's no risk, right? Oh, we did it. Okay. We got plus 10 cryo. Salvaging is brutal work, but you take no small sense of satisfaction from the ordered piles and clear yard you leave behind. Nice. Very good. So I wonder if we fill this up and then we start to fill up the deck called in. Or if we have to fill this up before this clock fills up, you know? I don't know exactly what the deal is there. We have 25 cryo now, so that's good. Let's go see if we can buy some food. I'm assuming that's what you do at the Emphis Street Food Vendor. Oh, it's Emphis. Oh, he's stylish. Oh, I love that art. That's so cool. It reminds me of uh, Kill the Kill a little bit for some reason. But anyways, Emphis is busy. His broad face uplit by the makeshift gas burner in front of him. With precise, delicate movements, he lays thick chunks of marinated fungus into a dented wok. Ooh, marinated fungus, eh? His other hand idly tossing a metal bowl of sliced vegetables and some red feckled dressing. The smell is incredible. Mmm. He watches he fulfills a set of orders, heaping the fungus with bright salad and depositing it in plastic trays. A stack of chits rattles in his apron pocket as customers file past the burner, heading, handing over payment. Should we approach or watch? Let's watch a little more. Despite the queue, Emphis doesn't rush. He dresses each person into portion individually, squeezing precise slugs of liquid from an assortment of bottles into the bowl of torn leaves and bright slices, before tossing them loosely together. Occasionally, a waiting customer might mutter something about efficiency, but Emphis remains steady in his process. Right, so he's... He's taking care with his work. He's not just churning shit out. He, he has some pride in things, it seems like. After a while, the queue fades back into the crowd, and Emphis sets down his metal bowl and looks up across the burner to see you, watching him. I can feel your eyes burning a hole in my bowl. Free sample? Hmm. I mean, he is offering, so I'll say yeah. He gestures neatly. Come over. The smell is almost unbearably strong as he cooks. The earthiness of the fungus laced with something so spicy, the smoke makes your eyes water. Mm, spicy fungus. The heat from the burner is like a bonfire, and your skin hardens in its glare. Okay, so I've noticed something. They are calling Emphis a he. So, I guess the doctor is androgynous or something, or just not binary, or just not clearly defined. I don't know. Um... So my skin hardened in its glare. That's kind of weird. Just noticed that line. Anyways, Emphis says, I know you, you sleepers. Emphis says while he cooks, his voice deep but clear. A hard life, a lot of stories. Mm. He glances up from beneath his cap with piercing eyes. I know. Let's tell him a story. You begin to tell him about your journey to the eye, and he nods as he cooks, his eyes never leaving his walk, or his work. <laughs> Uh, you tell him of the confusion, the pain, but also the sense of possibility in its sudden arrival. You tell him of the cold, of the dark, of the container, cold and the dark of the container, and the endless cycle spent within it. Now it seems, you tell him, like some dream that you once had, but can never forget. Hmm. You tell him that the eye excites you and scares you, and you are unsure where to walk, where to look, what to do. Eventually you tail off, running out of words. Hmm. He places a plastic tray of steaming fungus in your hand. Next time we can talk some more, he smiles. But next time you pay. Yeah, fair enough, Emphis. Fair enough. He slams a heavy hand against a button on the burner side, and it shuts off. The roar of the flame and its impressive heat fades. Next time, then, sleeper. Yeah, next time, Emphis. You're cool. Thanks, man. He waves you away and begins to oil the walk. Before you turn back to the alley, you notice the geometric patterns of circular scars around his forearms. Or across his forearms. Each surrounded with a constellation of glinting pin marks. I see that, yeah. Hmm. No, there's also this theme of, you know, you're around a bunch of humans, but you're not human. Which is partially just a game mechanic thing, because, you know, it sets up the, you know, you have to obtain medicine. Although they could have done that with the human as well. But, you know, you are an other here. You are some sort of weird... 
Um, not totally foreign, because people seem to know about sleepers, but, you know, you're not one of them. You're not a human, so... Interesting. You walk away, and as you do, you take a bite of the rich, spicy, delicately sweet fungus. Your taste sensors light up like a fusion reactor. You'll be back. Yes, I will be back. Oh, look at that. Food all the way up. New drive discovered. Gets no emphasis. Yeah, let's do that. Build a ship mine? What? Well, hang on. So, I just noticed that our drives have some flavor text. Let's check it out. Dragos pulled you out of the salvage and set you up. Perhaps you can repay his kindness in time. Perhaps. Mayhaps. I hope so. Emphis loves two things. Stories and food. Maybe if you supply him with both, you can hear his story. Hmm, I see. You've heard talk of a fabricator owned by the Ort Exchange. With, with that and a few fragments, you could build a shipmine core. Don't know what for, but it's something we could do, apparently. Okay, we have no more dice today, so... I think that's all we can do. Hmm. We want to explore more, just to see. So, yeah, let's let's just look around. We won't be able to take any action or anything. After some spacers caused some trouble in the low end, Yadagon have imposed a toll for entry. No one gets in without paying. I see 60 hmm, to unlock that part of the ship. Hopefully it's a one-time toll, but I don't know. So, okay. Can't do anything there. We're too poor. Um, no money for Impus and no need for food right now. Don't think anything's happening here yet. Yeah, we've got to wait for Sabine to acquire some stabilizer. So, um, what about the Ort Exchange? Yeah, this is going to take either an item or a dice roll, so we can't do anything here. We can read the tasks. So, the flow of chits and components in the exchange is complex, but a sharp eye and some tight trades can net you a good margin. Hmm. The exchange, eh? Is it like gambling? I don't know. Or like trading. I, I see, it's trading. So it's like buying stuff and then it's reselling or whatever. Okay, gotcha. And then sell components. The order exchange is always hungry for new hardware to buy up break down and sell off, and you're happy to supply it. I would be, except I don't have any, so we have no scrap components. And if we do this enough, we'll become a trusted trader. There's an old ship mine fabrication stack at the back of the market, but only trusted traders get access to it. Right. And that goes towards one of our um, what's it called? Uh, drives is what our goals are called. But we can't do anything here for now. Okay about Doc B2? So, salvage sortie. It takes several cycles to reach the star starward belt and return, loaded with scrap from the old Rex. Hmm. Can't do anything here. We may need to acquire a ship first or something. Um, let's try Doc C4 as well. Helion Crossing. Merchants willing to run the gauntlet of the Helion system are rare, but those that do always return, eventually. Hmm. Okay, so maybe different options for, like, salvage runs to go on or something? I don't know. The Rotunda. So there's stuff we can do here. Whoa, steel dock plans. Yeesh. Have an edge security have to have plans. Stealing them would be the fastest way to get to know this place. And the most dangerous. Yeah, I don't think we'll do that. And we have a minus one anyways, so yeesh. Um And then Doc Watcher, getting to know the Rotunda doesn't just mean new places to visit, it means keeping your eye on new arrivals too. Right. Makes sense. Let me water my throat a little bit more. It's wilting. And then there's Explore the Rotunda, which is risky still, but at least there's no minus one. The Rotunda of the old dock is filled with passways, passageways and concourses, leading to all kinds of docking bays. And then there's the Heaven Age watch list. Heaven Age run the Rotunda and their security watches the docks. Better to avoid attracting their attention. Oh, it's a negative. Oh, I see. Okay, so these clocks have a positive or a negative on the inside. Huh. Okay. 
So I guess if we get caught, we'll like slowly start to fill that clock up. Right? So if we go to Drago's yard and we look at his clock. Yes, yeah, so that is a negative clock up here. Right. Okay, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. And there's my container, which we're going to have to go to soon. But there's one more place to check out, which is here. Whatever this is. The shipyard. Hmm. So we could assist a ship, ship builder or haul materials. Yard hand. And we're building up a yard hand sort of clock. Hmm, okay. You don't have connections, but you do have skills. If you can get a ship builder to notice them, you might be in. Right. Still risky. Or you could haul materials. As a newcomer, you can only gain favor, favor by grabbing a load of materials and asking the nearest yard hand where to take them. Which is risky. And no bonus there. So we should lean into our engineering here, I think. If we do want to build a ship, which I don't know why we need yet. Again, our focus right now is mostly on survival. But there's nothing we can do. Um, may as well turn in for the night and cycle, right? Let's rest. Okay, so we dropped two hunger there. I'm fading still. This time you don't wake up. Instead, the ghost of the station, that shifting skeletal ring, surrounds you. Ghost of the station? Uh-oh. For a moment you are gone, absent from your own body, stretched out across a colorless void. Then the connections begin to establish themselves, threads tugging on the edge of your mind. Huh. I really like the music in this game, by the way. These threads become vectors of exchange and then extensions as you feel your thoughts slipping away down them, dissolving into the millions of distributed nodes they connect to. You see the station. No, you feel the station, like a web of texture in a smooth black liquid. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just rereading this. I don't know I comprehend the first sentence of this paragraph. Uh... Well, it says we feel it, so let's touch it. You find a point in the station, and you connect to it, pulse through it, follow loops and paths under and around it. You touch more points than you have finger to fingers, and then you try, in a moment of impulsiveness, to connect to them. The flow passes through you so rapidly that you feel yourself being carried with it, splitting and separating, eddying and gathering. As you do, things occur to you, things that you can't possibly know. You reach out, try to grasp them, try to touch them too. You notice a tugging feeling, pulling at you, insistently, as if it were a small child. Somehow it is pulling you in two directions at once. You look down. All of a sudden, everything shuts off. You come back trembling into this unfamiliar body, both yours and not yours, all at once. You find yourself standing in the container, eyes now open to the dark steel walls. You feel a change within you, a shift. Hmm. You close your eyes for a second, and you feel it waiting there, the station splayed out across your mind. A storm of connective nodes waiting to be explored, and then it's gone. So we have some sort of weird, like, psychic connection to the station or something. Alright, we still gotta wait for Sabine to acquire the stabilizer, I guess. We're down to three dice instead of four. Um, but we have been streaming for about an hour, so I'm gonna take a short break, get up and stretch my legs, and I'll be back in just a minute. So, um, sit tight. And I, w I won't sit tight. I'll be standing and walking around. So, But I'll be right back either way.
we're back. Amazing. So it's around nine o'clock right now, just past ten past, eleven past, and um, I do have a hard cutoff tonight at eleven, I think, unless we just get totally into this, which I don't know. It's it's been a good game so far, but um, there's a stream I want to catch at eleven, so we'll go for just under two hours more, probably, is what I'm thinking. In case you were wondering. Um, right. So we've got a six, we got, and two threes. So not the worst roll of the dice, but not the best. Let's go... Hmm, yep. Yep, the clock is a ticking on Drago, isn't it? So... Oh, and here, too. Oh, everywhere. Clocks are ticking away. Oh, this is going to take three cycles. Okay, I see. Let's go... Let's go to Emphasis Stall and just see how much he's charging. Hmm. 15 cryo. That's most of our money, but... That was just one day's of work, so... Yeah, we need to stay well-fed, I think. Plus, there's nothing else I really want to spend money on. Although, maybe we should save money for... The medicine. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to say we're going to be okay without food one more day. That's what I'm going to say. Um, let's focus on Drago for now. So, let's go ahead and... So, what does a four give me here? 75% chance. Hmm. 100% chance there. Yeah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that. We'll work in the scrapyards. Wait, oops. <laughs> Wrong button. My apologies. Start action. It's risky, but there's no chance of failure. Alright. 15 cryo from that. Beneath the pocket marked holes you find hidden containers, alloy plating, and wire bundles thick as your arm. Preserved in their trunking. Nice. Lucky us. And then here, 75% chance. I mean, it's safe, so... There we go. Neutral outcome. Salvaging is brutal work, but you take no small... Yeah, we've already read this one. And we'll go ahead and burn our other three dice here. There we go. Another neutral outcome. So we're really close to being back in business here. Very good. Um, And that'll do it for us today. We could buy some food. We could also open up the low end with our 60 coins, but... No, that'll be it for today, I think. So, back to rest. In the cycle. All right. Again, the skeletal ring of the station fills your mind. It sparks with glittering lights like stars reflected in a winter lake. It is clearer, crisper than before. The threads still pull, but you remain in place, flickering in the flow. Hmm. Between the threads, you see bright shapes, caches of shimmering light beneath transparent crystal forms. You follow the path of a thread across the ring, through these forms, then leaking, leaping off into the void. You begin to understand, do I? I don't know. These are nodes and connections, a map of information, of communication. There are so many layers, so many loops, that it seems almost impossible to parse, but you begin to try. Um... I think you gotta go nodes first, right? Then you can understand the connections. The nodes are glassy, bright, but in all this flow, the only solid and fixed points. You approach one, a pyramid, or a triangle. Dimensions are difficult here. Ah, I hate it. Hate it when that happens, when you're in trans-dimensional space. And lean close to it. Inside, shifting layers conceal a tangle of threads, a meeting point of exchange. But before you can glimpse inside, the glass clouds and hardens, cutting you off. Oh, okay. The threads and nodes. Passages and puzzle boxes. One leads to another. There's so much here, so many answers, so many questions. All you need to do is follow the paths and open the boxes. Look out across this ghost landscape of exchange and see an opportunity. Okay. Within that insistent tugging again, pulling at you, you look down again to see two lines, two threads pulling you in different directions. 
as if they were tied around you. We'll go with the first one. First thread leads out, away from the station, into the inky black. Someone out there is tracking you, hunting you, following the thread to you. They are in a ship, and the ship is approaching ever closer with each cycle. Well, that's ominous as fuck. The second thread leads in, pulling deep into the station. Your gaze follows it, and this time you see something. A sphere shimmering above a strange, angular body. A pulse shoots out from it, passing over you like a torch beam, testing you, tasting you. Mm. You open your eyes. Time is short. I, apparently. Ah, that's not a good roll at all. Someone out there is tracking you, following your trail. It won't be long before they arrive. Shit. Okay, stakes are rising. Tutorial, the cloud. Something has changed inside you. You can now access the data cloud of the eye, a network of de decaying protocols and data caches. While, while there, you can use dice and items to access systems and extract data. Hmm. Okay, so somewhere else to spend our dice. But be careful, these networks are old and strange. Click the I button at the top of the screen to toggle this view on and off. Okay. We'll continue. That. Ooh. Key node. Key node. Other node. Oh man, they're all over the place. Huh. Okay, let's click on one of these. It's kind of bright. Okay. Data actions. Data actions allow you to extract data from the networks of the eye. They work like dice actions, but in order to unlock them, you must match your dice to the one displayed on the right of the action. Oh, I see. If you have a plus one or plus two modifier in the interface skill, you will be given more possible dice to match. Huh. We don't, but okay. You can use any dice that matches the dice displayed. Once unlocked, the data can be extracted. Huh. Hmm. We do have a one. Shh, screw it. I'm not. I don't have anywhere better to burn it. So let's do it here. Let's bypass it. A lone connection feeds into this isolated node. Its last access timestamp is a thousand cycles ago. Okay. Let's extract that data. I'm slurping the data. Neutral outcome. Plus one encrypted key. Okay, so we got an encrypted key. Huh. Okay. And it's not a repeated action, so... Anyways, back in the waking world. So Drago is still in danger. Sabine is getting closer and closer. We need food. Let's go ahead and... Yeah, let's do our yard work for the day. We'll burn our four here. Guaranteed neutral action or better. There we go. And now Drago is fully back in business. And that's good. Okay. We have 75 points as well. Not bad. And we've eliminated the negative clock there. So. Nice. We've got a little bit of a... Right, they did say completing these would unlock story arcs and stuff, so makes sense. Ah. You arrive into a buzz of activity at the yard. Red blinking lights flash across a vast dark shape suspended below the dome. They flicker across scorched hole plates and bent structures, spilling from holes in the twisted shape. The cutter is huge and has been torn apart in some violent encounter. Oh no! She's a beauty, isn't she? Drago stands to the side, focused on the hulking ship as it is lowered into the yard. What is it? Dragos laughs. That, my friend, is A-grade scrap. Oh, the best scrap. Only the finest scrap. I should thank you. This place was on its last legs when you turned up, and now look at this. Yeah, you're welcome. The ship descends slowly, its interior visible through multiple hull breaches. You struggle to gather the same enthusiasm as Dragos for this monstrous craft. You can't help but think of what became of its crew. Mm. Yeah, what happened to it? What do you mean? He glances at you. I managed to convince our salvager friends to give it to me on credit. That's what happened. Well, that seems like a bad idea, but what happened to the ship? Not my concern, he shrugs. The ship creaks like a howling iceberg as it reaches the base of the yard. Dragos is visibly excited. I know I said you should stick shouldn't stick around. 
gonna, but I'm going to need some help with this one. The drones start to crawl out over the hole. Their lights illuminating flashes of dented hole. Hmm. Okay. Watching, you wonder if you arrived in a similar fashion. Locked inside that container. The wreck of the SNR freighter lowered into the yard like a corpse ready to be butchered. Was it the container delivered to Dragos on its own? A wound for your rebirth in this strange station. You shudder. I shudder. Sure. Perhaps if you could learn something about the ship, you might be able to trace the path that led you to this yard. Maybe. I don't know. It seems like a stretch, but whatever, main character. Dragos squeezes your shoulder. After these past cycles, I think we are up. Yeah, I think we're up to it. What do you think? You see the fading name of the ship emblazoned on its side. Winter light. Yeah, let's do it. Fuck it. Claps you on the back. Glad to hear it. Come back in a few days and we can, or in a few, and we can make a start. A real beauty, Dragos repeats, perhaps just to himself. You take one last look at the shattered ship as the drones start cutting, and then slip out of the yard, feeling suddenly cold in the empty passage. Hmm. Okay. I've completed my first drive. Yay! Each drive completed unlocks an upgrade point to spend on your up upgrading your character. Oh, okay. Access your character menu by the arrow button at the top right of the screen. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. Well, that seems good. But it requires two upgrade points. Chance game cryo and interface actions. No. For synthetic skin. Hmm. Predictive reasoning seems nice. Nice actions display potential positive and negative outcomes. That seems really good, actually. That's what we're going to do, I think. Yes, confirm. Okay, we're a little bit better than before. Nice. Oh, hang on. So we can actually look at our characters. So that's what we look like. We're, we're bald and we're kind of mechanical and... We got weird spindly finger things that kind of... We can pull away scrap metal with our bare hands. Pretty nice boots. Pretty nice pants. Nice green highlights. Weird finger drone on our shoulder. Got it. Okay. We've got one more dice to spend. Hmm. This one's burning fast. Hmm. But there's nothing to do there yet. Are there any other actions I want to engage in for the time being? We can just keep helping Dragos out. And then we can go get a nice hot meal afterwards. And then this should be ready for us tomorrow. So, yeah, let's just help Dragos. Um. Hmm. So this is a safe action. So we, we've got Cutter Salvage. Shipbreaking is tougher than slicing up loose salvage, but Dragos is happy to pay you a fixed wage if you're up to it. Hmm. And... Okay. Or there's the Winter Light. Hmm. I kind of feel like we're good on money for now. So this is a good option if we have a decent dice roll and we need money. But this is safe. And I feel like this Winter Light quest may be important. So I kind of want to focus on it when we can. Investigating the Winter Light means picking through its systems and structures with care. It won't pay, but you may find answers. Right, exactly. We're good on money, so let's just do it. All right, neutral outcome. Very good. Picking through the wreck clutter is slow work, but you start to piece together the impact patterns and blast marks. Okay. Let's go eat some mushrooms. Delicious mushrooms. 15. Uh, here we go. 
let's start action. Your mouth stings as your sensorium sends warning signals over and over. This is the good stuff, right? Okay. And that's all the food we need today. Um. Yeah, that's probably good. That's probably fine. There's also this whole thing. But I guess we can't take any more actions today, so. Yeah, it should be fine for now. All right, empty container. Let's end the cycle. A decent roll of the dice today. Someone is still tracking me. As you close up, a voice echoes down the corridor towards me. Sleeper, wait up. What's up? Oh, it's Fang. Halvenage Systems Engineer. Hmm. Fang is coming down the corridor towards you, a wonky grin on his broad face. Hey, glad I caught you. Do I know you? He grins. You do now. True. Very true. He puts a hand on your arm. I've seen you hanging around. Just want to chat. You staying in that thing? He nods back to the container, shaking his head. Rough. It can be hard to get a start on the eye. I guess. He looks away down the passage. What was it old Erland said? The eye opens for us all. Nice idea, but, well, not always very practical. He glances back at you. We do our best, but it isn't easy. Who's Erlin? You pass together into the main walkway. No one's told you about Erlin? He's the founder of this place. That's why it bears his name. Makes sense. Have an age should organize some seminars, he laughs. Not really my department, though. I'm with systems. Tell me about have an age. Think of us as an administrative association for the eye. Depending on who you talk to, we either emerge as a response to or a continuation of Andre Erlin's original union. He smiles. Personally, I avoid the topic. Okay. He stops you in the quiet passage. Look, that's not what I'm here to discuss. I've been seeing some unusual network activity and, well, I know a little about you sleepers. I have a small proposition for you. He glances around. But, well, this isn't the place for it. I have an office just around the way. Give me a cycle or two to prepare. Then, when you're settled, stop on by. He lowers his voice and gives you a dark look. In truth, I need you. If what they say is true about you sleepers, well, there's work to be done. Okay. He pats you on the back, his voice bright and his dark look suddenly gone. Stay clean, sleeper. He walks off down the passage, raising a hand in farewell. Well, he seems friendly, but he also needs something from me, so yeah. Kind of makes sense. All right. So, yeah, this is what we should focus on for now. The first thing you see on entering the glint of... is the glint of Toshiro's implant, like a cat's eyes, in the dark of the corridor. He nods you in as you arrive at Sabine's door. The entryway is still dark, and you push through the sheeting into the surgery. There they are. Hey, Sabine. I have it. Sabine stands with the case open in front of them, a set of vials lined up inside, separated by foam inserts. They pick one up, rotating it in the warm light. Okay. I have no idea how Yadagon, they trail off. We should treat this with caution. It looks authentic, but I have no idea if it's really what it appears to be. I guess we don't have any choice, right? Am I the test case? That seems to be the case. Unfortunately, I'm not sure we have any other choice. That's was, that was kind of what I was thinking, yeah. They gesture for me to sit on the bed. The stabilizer works under a similar principle to immuno immunosuppressant in a transplant operation, in that it stops your body from rejecting the unfamiliar parts of itself. Hmm, I see. In the case of your frame, the unfamiliar part is each of your biosynthetic organ, organ groups, which over time are identified by your body as foreign material and therefore eliminated. Okay. Some of the wording in here is not quite... Um, you know, 100% well put together, but that's okay. That's okay. Just an observation. Speed holds up a vial of the would-be stabilizer. However, unlike an immunosuppressant, the stabilizer doesn't do this by limiting your entire immune system. Okay, it's focused. Instead, it re-encodes your biosynthetic organs with new protein chains, which act as passcodes within your immune system. 
The stabilizer refreshes those passcodes, keeping your frame from rejecting all of its own organs. Which means... Which means that the stabilizer should be able to encode any organic or biosynthetic matter to be accepted by your immune system. That's good news. They glance away. At least if the stabilizer is genuine. The only way to know it for sure is to inject the vial. We begin readying the syringe. I'll start with a small dose to limit the risk. I don't have a choice. I think you're right. Sabine cracks the glass neck of the stabilizer vial and uses a syringe to extract a fraction of the liquid. They tap the syringe, and you watch a watch as if any sign might emerge from the clear liquid, which it wouldn't. You barely feel the needle, your frame registering the initial injection, but with little response. Ooh, there we go. A little doom. A sensation begins to spread from the site, a fizzing, trembling wave that disperses through your arm with incredible speed. Your vision goes white, and when it returns, Sabine appears encased in shards of sparkling light that slowly fade into darkness as you settle back against the bed. Fancy. You swim in darkness, muffled noises like an argument heard from underwater, prickling waves of cold. When you sit back up, Sabine is sitting in a chair by the window, facing away from you, backlit by the glow of the slate, their slate. Awake? What happened? The stabilizer is genuine. They sit down beside the bed. I don't know how Yagaton acquired a case of this stuff, but they did. Sabine looks troubled, distracted. I mean, that's kind of Yadagon's whole job, right? So, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it probably wasn't... <laughs> probably wasn't above-board means, but... You know, I mean, look at who we're dealing with. When you're dealing with the Mafia, expect the Mafia to use the tools available to them to get the job done. Ah... Let's continue. You should rest some more, but you are going to have to do some do that somewhere else. They gesture to the door. I have other patients. Sorry. That's okay. I understand. Sabine nods towards the case. I'm afraid I can't offer you any more doses. You're going to need to pay for your next dose. Okay. Silence fills the room, and they return to their glowing slate. Looking around the room. By the way, I noticed my bar isn't filled up anymore. Just pointing that out. Looking around the room, it seems different somehow, as if things have moved or shifted. You lo wonder how long you've been out. Sabine? Nothing comes free, sleeper. Remember that. I, w I will. You manage to get to your feet and wander out into the hallway. The queue stretches down the flickering corridor. Toshiro stands impatiently by the door and fixes you at the glare as you leave. You lower your eyes as you stumble past, somehow faintly aware of the station spinning beneath you. Huh. It's just like heighten our awareness or something. I don't know. Okay. But my... I'm stable now. That's good. So we could buy a vial of stabilizer, but why? Why would we? We're totally okay. We don't... No, we do need some food. Let's go ahead and buy some food. Uh, do, 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 do. Gib. What's under data, by the way? We have an encrypted key. Hmm, interesting. Um... Let's eat before work this time. Get a nice breakfast. So our energy is maxed out. Fungus fan is increased, and we are, like, totally maxed out. So tomorrow's roll of the dice should be excellent. Ah. Right. So now what? We got 45 credits, cryos. Hmm. We could do some work in the shipyard. I think we should actually go to the Ord Exchange. Can we drop this here? No, we cannot. So we have no items to sell. Let's see. So we could lose some money here, actually. Hmm. It is risky. What if? What does the three get us here? Let's try it. There we go. Positive outcome. You snap up a scrap by weight and then parcel it off to traders with a nice markup. You start to get a sense of the traders to trust. Hmm. Okay. Very good. Very good. Um. Okay. Let's back out. Let's go to Drago's yard. Let's earn some money. This is dangerous. So we'll spend our four here. Which bumps it to a five. Very good, very good.
Okay. Nice. Positive outcome. Now we have 80 currency. And then with our last one... <laughs> Anything in the uh, sleeping world, in the ghost eye... I kind of think this is going to come into play with that that guy that kind of tracked us down when he learned we were a sleeper. That's kind of my impression, but let's see. Anything here? Input, input one Solheim cipher. I don't have one, so I don't think I will. I'll move on. What about here? Match two. We can't do that. What about here? with this keynote. Again, matching to not possible. It seems like maybe this is a place to just burn low dice rolls. Oh, here we go. Interface. We could complete this sequence. Shall we? Do we want to do that? Or do we want to do something else? Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like focusing on the waking world is the way to go for now. I think. I don't know. So... I don't know. Let's focus on Drago for now. Hmm. Do we want more money? We don't really need more money for now. Let's, let's do some more Winter Light. I think that's kind of a quest line that we're committing to at this point. Okay. Neutral outcome. It's one more tick on this box, or on this circle, this clock. A tick of the clock. Drago's nerve. Drago seems increasingly nervous about your presence in the yard. Not sure he's going to hold his nerve much longer. Hmm. Okay. But it's a positive clock, so... Huh. Don't understand. Don't understand that. Okay. Let's call it a day. In cycle, that ominous hunted thing at the bottom is still is still there, letting us know that yes, your time is limited. Oh man, look at all those dice. Amazing. All right, do we have any... Hmm. So our main drives are build a ship mine, which we're kind of working on. Get to know Impus, which we're kind of working on as well. In fact, we may go get some food here in just a second. And study the winter light. And survive, of course. But we're surviving pretty well at the moment, so... Yeah, yeah. Let's see... Oh, what's that? Oh, go away, go away. What is that? Fang. Okay, so Fang is still getting ready, I think. Right? Or is he ready? Sleeper. Fang catches your attention as you approach the Have an Edge building, leaning against the bay door to the side of the entrance. Yeah. Fang's always chill. Look at him. He's got his drink with its cool, like, frog uh, branding on it. Very nice. And, and a little juice box to put the penguin on it. Very cute. I approach. Easier to come in this way. Security, all that. He gives you a look. You know. I know. He slams a button and the bay creaks open, blinking lights in the dark behind it. You follow Fang inside. Truth be told, I don't spend much time upstairs. This is where I work. The door hisses as it closes behind you. So he's taking us in the side way. The bay is filled with pieces of hardware, all rigged up to generators and diagnostic slates and things you don't recognize that glow with blue screen light. There's a chorus of hums that blends into a single wave of static, filling the dark corners of the room. Hmm. Fang leans on a server stack and gestures around. You like it? Uh, what is all this? Steps a nearby server stack, which leaps in response. He goes, bleep. This is my treasure trove, all dredged up from the sea of systems we call the eye. You wouldn't believe what this place runs on. Is it penguin juice boxes? He steps over to a towering block speckled with vents. Some of these systems are from the original station, IA-1, the one Solheim built. 
We've had to invent new components, repair things we never built, reverse engineer entire subsystems into existence. Damn, dude. Sounds like a lot of work. Glad you did that before I got here. Residents here look up the eye and think they are seeing a constant, a concrete reality. But this place is a system in constant flux, decaying and growing, collapsing into new configurations. You say so? He walks down between the hardware stacks and you follow. We are keeping this place alive, but also remaking it into something new, dragging it away from those corporate origins. He stops. At least, that's what I'm trying to do. Hmm. Sounds like probably not something that's in your job description, friend. He turns back to face you among the flickering machines. They hum all around you. I know you can see this too, Sleeper. All these systems and sections. You can, can't you? I can. I think that's the ghost world. It makes sense, right? You're between here and there, between the people and their systems. You light this place up like a beacon. That's what I need. Well, I won't do it for free, whatever you're asking me to do. I mean, I'm all about dragging it away from the corporate um, mainframe or whatever, but come on, man. You gotta eat. You got drugs to take. I glance at the lights around me, and as I do, they seem to flicker, to realign, to follow your gaze. Mmm, they're responding. Feng notices it, too. I'm guessing being a beacon isn't always ideal when you're on the run, though. They are tracking me. He pats you on the shoulder. Maybe I can help with that. There's a lot of old growth in this place. Subsystems I can't see. Access protocols lost of time and decay. Secrets. A shitload of secrets. Cool. With your help, I can unlock this place. Break off those last ghost limbs of corporate control. He lowers his voice be below the hum. Even in Havenage, there is old growth. Those whose roots trace back into those bad old days. Yeah, but what's your angle, man? I don't know. I don't... He's friendly and all that, but... I'm struggling to see what's in it for him. Like, why he would want to do this. I think he's probably angling to take over, but I don't know for sure. You help me dredge up the past, and I'll see what I can do about that tracker of yours. He winks. I mean, yeah, sounds good. I'm in. Fang pumps his fist and claps you on the shoulder. He meets your eye. You won't regret it, sleeper. I mean, we'll see. <laughs> Fang, passes you a, Fang passes you a ragged-looking metal tab. A gift, he smiles. It's a Solheim cipher. I needed one of those. I dug it up from the depths of the station. Slot that into an old network gate, and you'll be able to pull out all kinds of secrets from those nodes inside. Okay. He walks you back to the front of the bay. Start by bringing me whatever you can turn up. Use that emulated mind of yours and see what's there. Let's get a picture of how things are. All right. Those above, he nods at the ceiling. Have granted me an acquisitions budget. I can pay you for whatever useful data you bring in. I know you need it. I guess. I feel pretty good on money at the moment, actually. He slams the door button again. Keep it quiet and keep it clean, sleeper. And I'll see you soon. All right. You step, blinking, back out into the passage. Those flickering lights still in the back of your mind. They're probably staring at the back of my mind, too. All right, we have a new drive. It's, um... Extract the past, I guess. Or disable my tracker. Let's toggle that. I'm good on survival for the moment. Alright, it's uh, mushroom time. Come on, Emphis. Serve me up some delicious, delicious shrooms. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yes. I'm famished for fungus. All right, very good. And we're filling this up, so we should get um, some more Impus lore here soon. I'm, I'm excited. I can't even tell you how excited I am. I kind of want to go into low end, you know. kind of want to. Hmm. Let's... Do a hard day's work. Actually, no. Let's go here. Let's go to this uh, Solheim gate. And let's use our Solheim Cypher. There we go. Start action. Let's go. Nice. Neutral outcome. We got gate access. With a squawk of noise, the old gate flips open. Granting access. Nice. Okay. But what good does that do us? Oh, we have access to all these nodes now. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay. That one's got an AE. That's got an AE. That one's just numbers. Hmm. That's expensive. This network storage holds corporate records, most of them corrupted by a failed system purge. Hmm. Okay. 
I'm looking for something that'll take a two or a three, preferably a two. There we go. A Solheim Daemon attempts to protect this node, squeaking out of protective protocols like a mantra. Well, too bad for you. I've got a two dice. Let's extract that data. All right, we got Solheim data. Too bad for you, Damon. I think that's how you pronounce that, like Matt Damon, but I don't know. Whoa, laptop just went to sleep. That was startling for some reason. Shouldn't have expected it. Um, as you drift back from the node, something latches onto you. Twitch. A thread strung tight around you. It tethers you in place. A taste. Or a taste. The voice makes you shiver. It soars somehow both distant and close behind your ear. Uh-oh. See a distant glint of light shut off, and then suddenly a shape is at your side. It stalks around you, circling like a shark, like a wolf. Entity unknown. Astringent. Processing. Uh-oh! Let's resist. Oh, no. It's a sentient protocol unraveling. Yeah, I don't want to wake up and see this thing next to my bed. Struggle against the thread and it tightens in response, a glittering garrote. Please hold. The thread around you thickens until it is a ring, a cylinder, a tunnel of light circled around you. Mm. It is blinding for a moment, and then it is gone. As it fades, you see a figure, a creature in front of you. Its strange head flickers between different angles, reading you. What are you? Shape paces around you on lithe legs. What's lithe? Though there is no ground here to pace on. Entity, identity, origin, serial, cadence. The figure faces you expectantly. Mm, I really don't know what to do. It's not going to be pleased if I say I don't understand. It's not going to be pleased if I stay silent. So I'll just be honest with it. Unknown, known. The figure's strange head rotates. Brackish signature, of and not of. Attempting interface. As the figure speaks more, as the figure speaks more, threads begin to spiral from its head. Thick, snaking, vine-like ribbons. These, right here, you can see them. That flex and wave. They approach with intent. I'm not going to be able to run. I'm going to ask it to stop. The figure, the figure halts its threads, its head twitching. Entity, your identity is unknown. We only seek to correct illegalities. Can you confirm your legal right to sentience? Uh-oh. That's not good. Because up above, we were told that we're not, we don't have any rights. The doctor told us that, right? So, oh uh, no. The dog is asking the wrong questions, or the right questions, but maybe we're the wrong answer. Um, I can't. I really can't. Unfortunate. All at once, Hunter's head is directly in front of yours, blocking your vision. You stink of their taste, the one from the sealed dock. Hunter shimmers with fury. I will find access. I will interface. Sealed dock? An entity hides in the rotunda. You are its puppet. Oh. Hunter extends a razor-edged thread. I will not be diverted from my task. It glows with murderous intent. Uh-oh. I lash out with all my force. Not a physical strike, but a focusing... A spike of interference leaping out like the tip of a spear. Hunter stumbles, shifts, separates. Let's get the fuck out of here. You open your eyes. Blinking back into the station light. Shaking with fear. Yeah, be. We didn't take any penalty, though, to our stats, so that's good. Well, that was unexpected. Let's get the fuck out of Ghost World. All right, let's do some work in the real world here. Um. Yeah, we'll do some... We'll do some solid, you know, cutter salvaging make our, our money for the day enough to pay back for our mushroom, delicious mushroom, plus one. Ah. Right. Then do I want to... I'll put one towards winter light, I guess, as well. 
Nice. All right, that should be enough around here for today, I think. Wait, hang on. What was going on with... Okay, yeah, this is still ticking up, his being nervous. Drago, I mean. Okay. There's the docks. Nothing to do there next. Okay. Okay, hang on. There's something to do here. Actually, uh, pardon me for just a moment. I'm going to take another break. So, BRB. back. Yeah, I've always had a, a very tiny bladder ever since I can remember. I can remember purposefully basically dehydrating myself for road trips with the uh, family growing up just because um, I didn't want to inconvenience them, you know. And I did. If I drank a soda or something, it was, it was bad. It was like stopping every half hour. So I apologize for that. Um, but... Oh, and right now I'm also, like, just drinking a lot of water in general. Just trying to stay hydrated. I just did, just now. So, yeah. Yeah, my apologies for the uh, the frequent breaks, but there's nothing I can do about it, or I would. Besides just not drinking any water, which seems like a bad idea, so. Okay. So, we can make some money here. Or we could buy some scrap. Hmm. Hmm. And they won't let you buy too much of this. Oh, I see. So it'll only be here for three cycles, this freighter. Hmm. We could get a 100% endurance here and definitely get 15 crypto. Or cryo, rather, not crypto. Okay, so that's an option. I want to go back to the... Hmm. Okay, how about this? How about we get Dock Watcher done? Even though we have a disadvantage here. Let's do it. There we go. Dock Watcher has been completely filled up. So we walk into the security office on a shift change and walk right pat walk right back out with the plans moments later. Simple. Yeah. Simple and easy. Okay, nice. Very good. Whoa. So now we've got some got some new options. So let's explore them all. Ankta. Ankata. Stranded mercenary. Lankita. He's got that um you know stylized sort of design as well. Really like it, really pleasing. Hey you, wanna earn <laughs> do you wanna earn shit? <laughs> no, I'd like to earn something, not just shit, but I, I get what you're saying. Ankita stands be beside a huge pile of tied together whole plates. Oh, it's a she. Hm. She stretches out her back and her shoulders bulging beneath her flight suit. Um Yeah, sure, why not? Across the docking concourse as she begins to split the plating into two bundles. What is it with this place? She asks as she lashes the massive plates together. Everyone wants their cut. I mean, you gotta make money to survive, so. I notice the knife on her shoulder, too. It's a really impractical place to put a knife, you know. If you think about it, if the knife is 
Well, okay, I think you could probably put a knife on your shoulder and have it make sense, but that, you got to, like, reach up. Like, try it right now. I'm doing it myself. Like, try to reach up on your shoulder and then pull something back towards your back to uh, disengage it. It really doesn't work. You could flip it around and it would kind of work, but you'd have to be... You have to be really careful that your shoulder's out of the way. Your shoulder can't be up, and um, you'd also want the blade to be facing away from your neck, I imagine. So, you know, kind of wondering about... That knife may just be for show. I don't think it's very practical. Um, let's see. She straightens up to an imposing height. Her armor plate's creaking and looks you up and down. Don't try anything, all right? I wasn't planning on it. She taps the butt of her sidearm. Yeah, hopefully your sidearm's more useful than your fucking knife, but... And I don't see a sidearm on your model either, but whatever. Whatever. I don't want to have to put anyone else down today. Anyone else? I wouldn't think of it. Good, she pauses. Look, I'm not usually... Let's just say my temper's been a little short lately. Oh, good. Oh, good. She's just, um... <laughs> she's... Looking for people to shoot, I guess, or something. And get to hoist one bundle of plating onto her shoulder. Come on, then. Enough chat. You've got to earn that shit. I will earn that shit. Don't you worry about it. I struggle to shoulder the plates, but you do eventually. Ankita gives you a look, shifts this way, and she sets off down a gantry at impressive speed. As you catch up to her, she turns down a passage, pushing through a small crowd of Steve doors. What the fuck is a Steve door? What's all this for? Tell me. Oh, this? Yes, this. What's all this for? I think I was pretty specific with that. She nods at the plates on her back. I'm building a treehouse. What? She gives you another of her looks. We are. She already has her looks. We've only known her for like 10 seconds, but whatever. It's for the Amburgis, that cutter you might have seen sitting silent out there. Okay. She rapidly turns another corner as you trail behind. She's got cut up pretty good back. She got cut up pretty bad on our last job, and I had to moor up here for a spell. But since then, it's only gotten worse. Someone got in and sliced the core from our ship mine, so now she's gone dark. She shifts the panels on her shoulder. I know where her ship mind is, actually. It's in the uh, market, I think. The upshot is that I'm short one ship mind with a ton of repairs to do, and the rest of the crew signed off the moment they got wind of that I'd been stranded. So yeah, it's been a time. Um, can I help? I don't know. Got a ship mind tucked away on that frame of yours? I mean, not presently, but soonish. For a moment, you aren't sure if she's serious. Seems like she's a person that's hard to tell what, like whether she's serious or not for whatever reason there are people like that I guess I'm kind of like that just because of my I'm so sarcastic all the time I've been told that it's hard to tell what I'm really thinking but um, yeah anyways Nikita swings the plates from her back almost knocking you over in the process this is me she hauls the second bundle off your shoulder okay you're the first person I've met here who might actually be considered helpful she pauses, chewing her bottom lip. Look, you want to help? Come see me. I need a hand putting Amber back together, and you don't seem like the type to try anything stupid. I mean... Don't look at my Elden Ring playthrough. <laughs> You'll find plenty of examples of me trying stupid shit. But, um, fair enough. She passes the bundles of plates through the Am Ambergis's outer lock and then turns back. Is that right? Ambergris's outer lock and then turns back. Just don't go spreading all this around. And Kita throws you a couple of chits. Consider it a bonus for not trying to grip me. Yeah, sure thing. She gives you a parting nod and ducks through the doorway. All right, get out of here. Fine. And the lock slams shut. I will then. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay. Hmm. So now what? So that's that. So that's the new quest. Uh, What about this place? Which was, hang on, what was it called? The Overlook... Overlook Bar. Yeah, let's go to the bar. It is Friday night, after all. We can get a drink. You're unsure if your frame can metabolize alcohol, but this fungal drink fermented along the greenway seems like a good test. Everything's fungus here. I guess it makes sense. Everyone knows that fungus grows really well in space. Or we could buy rations. Tala keeps some expired Solheim rations behind the bar for those weary spacers who ask why the Overlook doesn't serve food. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so if we buy enough drinks, we'll be considered a regular. Yeah, let's see what happens. We got money to spend. What happens when a sleeper takes a drink? So we got energy from that. Okay. 
Uh, mossy tones and aniseed sharpness fill your mouth. It isn't totally unpleasant. At least you can taste it. Okay. I like tasting my drinks sometimes. Sometimes you just inhale them, but sometimes it's good to taste them. All right. Sealed dock. Let's see what's going on here. Do I have one of those? I do. These old maglocks look like they each need an encrypted key to open. Why the heavy security for a decaying dock? Yeah, good question. We need two of these, so I only have one at the time. So we'll come back. No need to burn it in case there's a, a one key thing. A one key task. Okay, I say we burn our last fiver at the exchange. Get a little bit closer to getting that chip brain or whatever it's called. Um, chip mind, right. Let's play the exchange with zero risk at all. 100% positive. Action complete. We got some... Oh, yeah, that's where we got money from. Okay, I was wondering how we made so much money. It's it's at the exchange. Right? And we're only two away from becoming a trusted trader, so... Good stuff. There's, there's progress being made. I think that'll probably do it for today. We could go ahead and unlock the low-end gate. I'm going to say let's do it. Although I'm leery of doing it without any dice to roll. Um, should be fine. Famous last words. I don't think there's any saving in this game either, so I can't cheese it. Um, right, let's pay the toll. That's the other thing I'm worried about. If it's a one-time toll, or if it's a everyday toll. All right. So now, aha. Now we can go all the way up here. Oh, there's a gap here. Mind the gap. What's this? Some risky actions here. What is this place called? I didn't see it. It popped up late. There it is, the low end. It's a residential district, I see. Yeah, it does kind of look like an apartment now that you mention it. Hmm. Maintained by the residents, the ramshackle blocks are always in need of repairs. Okay, so we could become a low ender. We could. It's an option. Hmm. We could play Tabla, whatever that is. Hmm. So we could gain energy by doing maintenance. We do have a plus one over there, too. Hmm. Hmm. But if we want to get low ender status, we gotta play Talavia or Tabla. 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 What's going on down here? Founders Gap. 150. Okay, so that's not happening for a while. Ooh, there's another thing. The free spoke. A transit hub. What's going on here? Ooh, dangerous. Enter the spoke. Tangle network of service passages and makeshift tunnels cut through the spoke, as if it were a hive. There are no maps here. Oh no. Or scale the spoke, which is a minus one. Blistered with precarious elevators and stairways, the spoke can be navigated from the outside. But the climb requires bravery. Why not just use the elevator? Why are we making this difficult? Like, they wouldn't make a thing and make it hard to navigate. But okay, character. Noted. Huh. I don't think there's anything else we can accomplish today, though. We could buy another drink, but I'm going to limit it to a one-day, one-per-day sort of thing. So, and I don't think we need rations either. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and end the cycle. So that a new one can begin. We need to deal with this hunted flock. It's a problem. But first, let's get some delicious mushrooms. Mushroom time. And a, uh, a quest progression as well, I think. Let's chow down. Mmm, so tasty. So spicy. 
Right. So that should... Yeah. Sleeper, Impus calls out to you, a booming voice that echoes throughout the corridor. Or does it bloom throughout the corridor like the like a delicious mushroom? Tell me a story. He throws a handful of chopped mushrooms into his walk, fire leaping up to meet the oil. I see you cycle in, cycle out, but we never speak. Tell me a story. What kind of story? Any kind. Wow, okay. Way to narrow it down. It's like um, <laughs> trying to choose somewhere to eat with your significant other. Oh, man. I thought that was just a meme or something or just a joke, and then it actually happened all the time when I was in a relationship so long ago. Um, he pauses to drizzle something from a plastic bottle onto the walk. But one of yours, he looks up at you. Nothing stolen. Hmm, I see. I pause, the spices rich in my nostrils, and think about the kind of story you'd like to tell Impus. Hmm. I look at Impus, the listener, and imagine he has heard it all before. Perhaps he would enjoy a strange story, something with some spice. Well, he's saying nothing stolen. If we tell a ghost story, it's not clear whether it's our ghost story or just uh, one that we've heard. So let's do. Let's tell him, talk to him about our dreams. All the sleepers, you tell Impus, had dreams. Some were simple. Memories left over from the emulation process that had become tangled up in their minds and would come out when they slept. It wasn't rare to hear a sleeper in the dorm scream or cry out in the night. But in your dreams, those gray skeletal altar images of systems and structures, of threads and patterns, weren't like the others. They weren't memories or nightmares. They were reflections of reality, distorted, yes, but somehow true. You learned, back then, to keep quiet about them, to let them flow through your mind like water. That was until now, until you arrived in this place, until we told this guy about it. Maybe you could have told me that the story you were going to tell was some sort of secret. Main character. Now your dreams colonize your waking life. They slip behind your eyelids with every blink. And now you understand they aren't dreams at all, but some process of interfacing, of speaking, of living in another world that flows through this one like smoke through the air. Very poetic. You tell him that you do not know if there is a reason for your dreams. Perhaps, you reason, is just some side effect or a particular quality of the frame you inhabit. Maybe. But whatever it is, it's a gift, and you hope to make use of it. Do I? I guess may as well. Impus finishes cooking and squints a little at you. Sleeper, he smiles. You are quite the storyteller, am I? If you say so, Impus. I mean, he would know, right? He's probably heard enough stories. He eyes you, and you realize that he is trying to gauge how honest you have been in your story. I have been honest. Impus passes you the meal he has cooked, and you take it gratefully. As you eat, he talks. A natural exchange. Thank you, sleeper. He looks around the emptying market. My time is done for today, and I do not want to keep you longer, so I will make a proposal. Oh, we're getting married. All right, let's go. Getting married to Impus. Impus arc, let's go. He gestures to the plastic boxes of ingredients stacked behind his stall. These are good enough for most, but someone told me a story that made me think, a couple cycles ago. They said that across the gap, in Greenway, fresh mushrooms grow. Have you heard this? No, I have not. Neither had I, but I trust the one who told me. Impus begins packing up his things. Can you bring me some? I cannot cross the gap, and I worry about leaving my things behind. He smiles. I'm sure a storyteller like you could handle the trip. Why do you think storytellers are good at traveling? That's a bit of an assumption to make. I will prepare them for you, and if you wish to tell it, be the audience for another story. Okay, sounds good. Although it's 150, it's fucking expensive. Good, booms Impus. Then I will wait for you to bring them. Impus slides his walk away and straightens up. I will prepare a recipe then, sleeper. Good luck with your foraging. Thank you. You turn away and walk pack, walk back into the main market. The rich taste of Impus's food still lingering in your mouth. Stories for food, you think. A trade that seems more than fair. Concur. All right. Okay, we've got... Our money supply has suddenly been depleted quite a bit. We need to get over there for Empus, but it's going to take some doing. Let's see here. I want to go see Fang. 
I think I have some data for him. There you go. Okay, we got some money there. Fang's eyes light up at the, as the data is transferred over. He hands you a stack of chits and waves you off. Thanks, Fang. Appreciate it. Right. Yeah, we need to focus on getting this done, which means going into Sleepy World. Let's see if we can grab some more data from anywhere. Hmm. What's that? Avenatch Gate H4. Seems like the diamond gates are where you get data, maybe? We have a two. We don't have a two. Okay. We're out. What about here? Nope. We need some sort of cipher, it seems, which we don't have. What about a triangle? What does a triangle require? More dice, eh? Have an edge member is broadcasting on the open network from here, leaving them open to data extraction. Oh, I see. What is this hunter bar? It makes me a little nervous. Here we go. We got a we got a one. May as well burn that, right? This note is leaking corrupted contractor lists or contractor lists from the early days of the system's palladium rush. Let's bypass that shit. And extract the data. Nice. Okay, that's one more data. I think we need two more, right? So, not two more, but two more. Oh man. If we get another one, we'll remember we can come there. Hate to give up a three, but we're going to go ahead and do it. Bypass it. And extract. All right. Ooh, another encrypted key. Oh, we can unlock that maglock now. Very good. It's not exactly what I wanted, but okay. Okay. So let's go. Oh, I see. My hunter bar is filling up now. I wonder if that's permanently building up or if it cycles down. Hmm. All right. Sealed lure. Let's do this. Start action. The maglock thunks open, and you can remove it from the entryway. On to the next one, immediately. There we go. And it's done. So, the door's been unsealed. Don't know why we have to back out and then go back in. Ooh, a mysterious machine. Do tell. Whoa! Oh, nice. I love the art. It's, uh, Neovin 33. As you slip inside the sealed... The, why did they seal this behind two maglocks? I guess we'll find out, right? Maybe the most evil vending machine at all time, of all time. It might be one that, you know, vends... It's, it's got, like, the glass on the front. It, like, vends an item. And then it just sticks up against the glass. And you can't ever get your, uh, you know, what you paid for. That's the only thing I can think of that could possibly be evil about this thing. But who knows? As you slip inside the sealed dock, a pulsing light grabs your attention. Among the discarded tubing and rusted plates, a machine flickers with a warm glow. Let's approach. As you get closer, you recognize the machine's blocky shape settled into an alcove in the side of the dock. A kind of upright cabinet is covered in faded logos and messages. Like, please wait, and... In Vichan, and your order, thank you. Uh, from which you assume it was once an industrial vendor intended to, dis to dispense and manufacture ship fittings and other mechanical parts necessary for the regular running of freight and resource extraction vessels. Okay. So it's not a, like, snack machine, but it's a part machine. The manufacturer is listed as Neovend, and you remember an advert from long ago squeezed among all the off-world recruitment drives that assaulted every planet-born citizen which chirpily sang the name over and over. You wipe a layer of dust from the cracked screen, thinking of those contractors squeezed by their own corporate employers to pay for every bit of minor maintenance on their rented ships. Enter your registration, chirps a pre-recorded message, catching you off guard. 
Let's hit some random keys. You reach for the keypad and something begins whirring. At first, it sounds like server or surf motors starting up, but it quickly becomes a whisper, a whining, then a multi-tonal voice that emanates from Neovend. Okay. Entity, they hiss. Speak with me. Who's there? Who goes there? There's a squeal, almost like some strange mechanical swallowing or intake of breath. Before the machine speaks again. I have need of you. You have need of me. Okay. We need each other, it seems. That squeal comes again, and you see that it is the 3D printing apparatus in the upper right part. The upper part of the machine resettling into place. So that each time the servos can be orchestrated to produce that whirring, whining voice. It's printing a voice. It's 3D printing audio. Okay. Innovative. And I can see the 3D printing thing up here. It's right there. Continue. You are in danger. I know. Are you the vending machine? <laughs> a squeal. Choose this vessel for its seclusion. Or chose this special vessel for its seclusion. Please listen. Machine creaks. You are marked for deletion, entity. Hunter tracks you. Oh yeah, that's a fucking problem. You're right. The screech rattles through the empty dock. You remember the strange head, the figure, the threads closing in. Oh, was this the thing it was worried about, actually? Hmm. Hmm. Putting two and two together. Hunter. Yes. The Hunter Protocol. They taste your signature. The sudden whine sets your teeth on edge. You have seen them. This is the gift of an emulated mind. Close your eyes and the skeleton of the station starts to thrum. Thrum? Emulated minds are adaptable. Move where neurons cannot. The mechanism resets. But emulation makes you target. It's true. Hunter searches for illegal entries. Or entities. No Ben screeches. You are sentient, therefore illegal. Hmm. The servos judder the vending machine. Uh, the servos judder the vending machine's casing as they reset. Hunter searches for me also. Hide in this machine. You look at the ruined vending machine. Unusual hiding place for sure. I, I mean, I don't know. People have hidden vending machines before. I wouldn't judge it too harshly. Can counter Hunter, but need an entity outside machine. The light flickers. Need you. A screen attached to the vending machine with a swiveling arm comes to life. It displays a flickering map of the station, ghostly, threaded. It's the cloud. Points along the rim glow in deep red. Hunter is always gathering. He's a hunter-gatherer. <laughs> Too much data. Must build nests, explains Neoven. Neoven, sorry. Masters are gone, but continues hunt. Bring this data. Raid its nests. I mean, I think I understand why he can't. He's a goddamn vending machine. So we'll choose the other option. Station builders. Solheim. The machine rumbles impatiently. Long gone. The protocol still haunts. Bring offerings. Save self. Neovin says pointedly. It's not just Neovin. It's Neovin 33, my dude. In fact, the 33 part's a little bit cuter, I think. Mutual need means friends, maybe. They conclude, tired of the conversation. The whirring amplifies and then suddenly drops as mechanisms within the machine click back into place. The glow fades, and you are left stood in the dark of a sealed dock. That whirring voice ringing in your ears. Hmm. Okay, so we've got, yeah, free Neovend as another optional drive or, you know, quest. Hmm. So what do we do? We've got dice to spin here. Let's go ahead and, okay, let's go to the bar. Get our drink. There you go. Uh, do, 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 and action. Become more of a regular, you know? It's two days in a row. The uh, bartender's starting to notice me. Okay. Now what? Kind of gotten sidetracked here. We have some data, right? Okay, let's go turn that in to, um, to Fang. There you go, sir. I think he pays me for it, too, right? Yes, yes. More crypto. Good. Or er, cryo. I'm going to keep making that mistake. So, thanks helping me with the other hunter problem. Like, it sounds like a ship is coming to take me out. This clock. And then vending machines potentially helping me with the sleep station hunter problem. All right. We've got 
three decent dice to spend. Let's go see Dragos. If we do this. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Clear out some yard. Help with Dragos's nerve. Very good, very good. Go ahead and leave. See, I'm kind of tempted to just dump all this into the yard. But, I don't know. Let's actually... Hmm. Yeah, let's go to the Ord Exchange. Let's go ahead and play the exchange here. Get our... Okay, I thought we had a plus one there, but we don't. Very good. 19 cryo. We're a trusted trader now. We got 80 freaking cryo. Awesome. Good stuff. Hmm. Okay. So we should have access to this. Hang on. I thought we had access to the ship mine, right? Where is it? Uh, build a ship mine. Yes, 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 yes. You've heard talk of a fabricator owned by the Ord Exchange. With that and build a few fragments, you could... With that and a few fragments, you could build a ship mine core. Gather three ship mine fragments. Well, let's track that, because I have no idea where. Oh, there it is. Ord Fabricator. Okay, okay, okay. Let's check it out. We need salvage fragments. Where can I get salvage fragments from? From here. Hmm. Yeah, let's buy some of this, I guess. Okay. We got one random scrap item. Okay, that's what we needed. Ship mine fragment. Hmm, this is going to be gone tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead and do it again. Okay. That's not what we needed. Just regular scrap components. But we can take that, right? We can take that to the exchange. Yeah, exactly. Here you go. Nice. So we made a little bit of money back. Not all of it, but we did get this one ship mine fragment. Okay, we're going to max this out real quick. May as well, may as well, may as well. We're going to max out our spending, <laughs> which will max out our scrap allowance here. Ah, just more random scrap. Okay, okay. The scrap is crap, but... We can make a little bit back. And then, I think the last thing I wanted to do was... I wanted to head up to... Yeah, here. And... I wanted to play Tavla, I think. We don't really need energy. But I would like to become a low-ender. Because I bet they'll open up some uh, delicious, tasty, spicy quests. I bet. All right. You duel with a sharp-eyed teenager, blocking each other with careful moves. You win, and the crowd chatters. Clearly impressed. Yeah, you should be impressed. It's me, after all. Um, all right, let's go ahead and leave. Let's go here. May as well. Or do we need to... Hmm. We may need all three at once. Yeah, we got to input three, so okay. Is there anything else we want to do? Is there anything else? Our... We're still stable. We're still... Our belly is full of delicious, spicy mushrooms. Um, no more dice to play. Nothing else I really need to buy. Yeah, let's call it a day, I guess. Back to the empty container and let us recycle our cycle. All right, this will probably be the last cycle for the day, I think. And before that, short break. Be right back.
Oh, when it's my time to throw the next stone And I'll call you beautiful if I call it all Hey, when it's my time to call your blood now call you beautiful only in love yeah you call me a i realized when i got up to use the restroom that these type of games like this i don't know like text heavy story heavy games don't really give me much opportunity to sing or much like motivation to sing which is, I don't know. It just, it just is, you know. Neither good nor bad. Ah. All right, last cycle of the day. Let's uh, do the thing. Let's make some decisions. Kind of uh, not my favorite dice rolls of all time. That's okay. All right. Whoa. Hunter nest. Oh, I see. Well, I'm going to say the hunter's not really perturbing us yet. So, let's see. I think there was a one. That's a two. But we do have a two anyway, so let's do that. Bypass. Someone hid this. For what purpose? Don't know. Extract it. We got some data. We got an encrypted key. It's not really what I wanted. I wanted data. Okay, let's look a little more. What are you again? Four. Oosh. Pricey. Pricey, pricey, pricey. What about this? One? Okay, we got a one. Give me that delicious data. We <laughs> slurp it up. Another key. God damn it. Ugh, fucking. All right, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. See ya. Um. <laughs> well, everyone knows that you start the day with delicious, delicious mushrooms. Every day. If you can. And we can. Therefore, we do. Never had mushrooms for breakfast, I don't think. Actually, mm, maybe only an omelet. Maybe. All right. Our belly is full. We're still stable, but things are ticking down just a little bit. Uh, t -t 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 the ship should be gone. Nope, soon. What is what did what does she need again? I can't remember. Yeah, repair the ship's hole. Hmm. Whoa, locked. Skill upgrade required. Okay, I guess we're not doing that. Let's do some. Yeah, let's do some repairs here. Very good. Ship shape plus one. Not the best outcome, but a decent outcome. Let's help our boy Dragos. <laughs> a little bit risky. A little bit risky. Negative outcome. No! My condition. Made some money. We got freaking blown up. You mistakenly take your torch to a fuel line and the residue ignites. Knocking me back into the yard. Oh, no. We're flickering a little bit. Okay, let's see what happens here in the surgery. A hundred state... Oh, no. Well, that's bad. <laughs> okay, let's uh, go to the ord exchange real quick. And let's play the exchange. Surely we won't get two negative outcomes in one cycle. Surely. Oh my god, no! I got cheated on. Or I got cheated, <laughs> rather. Oh no. Well, today was a shit day, wasn't it? Okay, we can't end on that note. Surely we can't. Let's, let's go. We need a drink after that for sure. Okay, we're now an Overlook regular. Whoa. 
The glass shatters on the steel bar beside you, and the taunts don't take long to follow. Hey, Haunt, the spacer calls across the low room. What are you doing here? He laughs at his own lame joke. Playing human? Um... Let's ignore him. You hunch a little further, staring at the hundreds of tiny impact points that scar the bar. A hand falls on your shoulder, but as you flinch away, it pats reassuringly. I freeze in place. Oh, it's Tala. Oh, she's cute, isn't she? Out. The voice comes from behind you, spat out like a shot. You turn to see bright eyes, dark hair, a stare that could reach the wall and vent you all into a hard vacuum. As you turn back to the spacer, the second glass comes sailing through the air. Let's catch it. The reach of a hand and the glass shatters across your forearm, showering you in fragments. Ow. Ow. Through the haze of glass in real vapor, you see Tala leap the bar and close the distance to the spacer. The thud as he slams into the wall echoes around the bar like thunder. Nice. Yeah, don't fuck with Tala. Now flanked by other figures, quick to their feet, Tala throws the spacer out through the door and stands silhouetted against the rotunda lights. You touch your arm and it feels wet. Someone helps you to your feet and back onto your stool. Yeah, trying to catch the glass was a dumb idea in hindsight, I'll admit. Broken glass rattles as it is cleared, and a fresh measure of real is lugged out in front of you. That same hand, warm heavy, falls on your shoulder once more. He isn't coming back. We don't tolerate that kind of shit here. Tala plots onto the stool beside you. Let's get a look at you. Tala wipes the powdered glass from around the wound, and someone places a bottle of alcohol and metal tin with teasers on the bar. She disinfects them and then turns to you. Oh, thanks. That was an ambitious catch. Yeah, ambitious is one way to put it. Foolish is another. Uh, she smiles, pulling a silver sliver of glass from your forearm. Stupid, but ambitious. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying, actually. I don't feel the pain, only the sting of status messages your body delivers concerning thermal damage and exposed structures. Thermal. Thermal. Yeah, because your skin's the epidermis, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, no, I know stuff. You do feel the care, though, as Tala's bright eyes search your thick synthetic skin for splinters. Let's look away. That's what I would do in real life. As Tala works, your, you glance around the overlook. The dim orange lights built into each table, giving the scattered patrons a conspirational mood. Hmm. Let me try that one more time. <laughs> that may have been the worst line of the night. As Tala works, you glance around the overlook. The dim orange lights built into each table, giving the scattered patrons a conspirational look. Or mood, rather. Almost got it. <laughs> you recognize a few from previous meetings, but they seem to have forgotten the recent confrontation as quickly as it arrived. Each seems in their own bubble, whirling away at the hours in this repurposed dock with its meager distractions. It's not as bad as it looks, says Tala, without making it clear she means the bar or your wounds. Tala smiles to herself. So, you been on the eye long? I just arrived, really. I thought so. I've only seen you here a couple of times. Three times, really. A splinter clinks into the tin. Not everyone is like that idiot. We don't all hate you. Well, that's good. Only some of us hate you. <laughs> she glances around. Some of the regulars, maybe they fear you. Maybe they're just curious. I don't know. But I do know that the Overlook is a safe place. I mean, besides the shards of glass in my arm, I'll take your word for it. I know what it's like to be new in this place. Trust me she meets your eye. I'm not trying to convince you of anything or separate you from your chits. I just want you to know that if you need somewhere, you can always come here. I want you to know if you need somewhere, you can always come here. Thanks, Tala. I know the rations we got aren't much, and the company is, she leans in, limited. But if you need work, I'll happily put you behind the bar. And if you need shelter, well, we can discuss that. Okay. You'll be safe. I usually have Francis on the door, but he's up in the greenway this cycle haggling with our supplier. Francis tends to be particular about what we serve, even if the clientele isn't. Hmm. I like that. Man has standards. She places her tweezers in the tin with a clink. That's you, sleeper. Here. She slides the glass of grill up to you. This'll help. Thanks. She stops, her hand still on the glass. Wait. Does this help? I mean, can you get drunk? Let's find out. <laughs> she laughs. Just don't sit here too long. I'd hate to see you become a real regular. She walks back around the bar, gathering the glasses as she does, and before long is retelling how she threw that spacer out to a new group that just wandered in, complete with dramatic actions. Nice. Th there's talking in the background in the bar, and it does bother me. <laughs> it puts me on edge just a little bit. She gestures in your direction, and you instinctively look away, back to the worn surface of the bar. You take a slip of the grill, 
So am I pronouncing that right? Girol. Girol. Girole. Girole. Girol. Girol. Grill? We'll call it the grill. The earthy fungal tones fill your senses, almost blocking out sight and sound. It's like diving headfirst into a bog. You may not be able to get drunk, but this connection to something grown, something fermented, something old, feels good. Okay. Cool. Well, I was going to try for another cycle, but the uh, the bar cutscene kind of took a while, so I don't think we will. Let's uh, quit the menu. Yeah, it is auto-saving, isn't it? So... Right. So that was our first dive into Sleeper Citizen. Um, what do we think of this game? We, by we, I mean me. Um, yeah, it seems good. Um, you know, very, you know, it's sci-fi, it's story-driven, which we kind of knew. Um, I have a feeling it's one of those games that if you really sink into it, like the characters will have arcs and you'll get attached to them and you'll feel things. <laughs> so if you're into that, maybe give it a shot, you know? I don't know if I'll be coming back to it. I kind of want to. Um, I would like to see where this is all going. But I don't know. See, I'm saying this, and now the menu music is kind of pulling me in. <laughs> it's kind of drawing me back into the world. I don't know. It's a nice kind of like lonely, dark journey. Uh, the gameplay, yeah, I don't know. With like the dice where you roll every day, and that like determines your actions. I don't know. It's pretty simplistic, isn't it? Um, you know, it's kind of built as like a TTRPG type game, right? And I guess the dice aspect of that is kind of what is driving that along with just it being a narrative and all that. But I don't know. It's more strategic, right? It's like a little bit of luck at the beginning and then you have to decide, you know, how to spend your, your dice to accomplish what you think you want to accomplish. So I don't know. I'm not sure if it's possible to see everything in the game the first time through. It seems like one of those games that's going to have multiple endings and branching paths and things like that. So it's probably ripe for replay as well, I imagine. But I don't know. It seems promising, but I have to give it an incomplete at this point. I think that's fair. So... Yeah. Like I said, don't know if we'll come back or not. It'll... I bet it'll be one of those games where a week from now we'll we'll dive back in. And, um, you know, I'll get an itch for it. And we'll, uh, we'll check it out. And then maybe... Maybe after a couple more hours it'll really sink its hooks in. And we'll be... <laughs> then we'll be on the ride. And there will be no getting off. But that'll do it for tonight, I think. So, yeah, nice two and a half hour stream. Nice relaxing um let me see I don't think I don't think I ever had a chance to talk about anything that's going on with me this stream but there's not anything going on with me there never is so don't worry about that uh just happy to get through another week of work basically as far as streaming schedule goes I'm thinking tomorrow will be tabs day we'll see I don't know my first I've streamed tabs like five or six times now. I think five. First time it was okay. The second time it really ramped up. And the, the like second, third, and fourth streams of tabs were really popping off. Like there were people coming from all over the place to uh, to throw their content at me. And then last time was a little bit down. So I kind of want to do tabs once a week, I think, is what I'm thinking now. We'll see how the stream tomorrow goes. If it just completely falls off, then... I feel like I've kind of seen everything I need to see with that game for the time being, honestly. So we may give it a nice break. Um, and go to, like, you know, try again in a couple weeks, maybe. I don't know. Um, and then Sunday, I haven't decided. I still want to play Vampire Survivors again. So it may be that, or it may be some other random game. But it won't be a long game. It'll be something like this. Something random, or some other sort of... Um, you know, game that isn't a huge commitment, I think. So that's kind of my plan. And then after that, we'll be into next week. So who knows? 
we'll, we'll touch base again then. So, until the next time, take care of yourself, please. Please take care of yourself. Um, I, I, yeah, it's important. And I will try to do the same. I guess one more thing before we get go out of here, because, you know... I do always try to send good vibes out, because I think the world needs it. This is a game that is kind of very lonely. You know, your character is an outcast, and he's, like, trapped in his body. And there's stuff going on that he doesn't understand, and things are coming to, to wipe him out, basically. Um... But he's kind of meeting people along the way that they're kind of filling in the emptiness in his life, it seems like. That's kind of how it's going. Um, I don't know. Like, it's it's pretty deep and powerful. I don't know that I can relate too much, because... Um, I don't know. To me, if, if I were projecting my life onto this game there would be a lot more <laughs> toiling away and a lot more or a lot less relationship building which would make it a very shit game but I'm just saying maybe my life is a shit game <laughs> maybe that's the lesson we learned here but yeah good game I'd like to play more maybe we'll maybe we will play more in the near future so Right. Like I was saying, take care of yourselves. I'll do the same, and um, I'll see you next time. Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? But if I do, uh, I look forward to it. So, uh, goodbye, everyone. Couch is gonzo.